Hypocrisy. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I'm your host, Nick Ricada of Ricada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. With me tonight is Mr. No Tie himself, Andrew Bronca. And, oh, we have a new challenger approaching as well, Mr. Uncivil Law. Hey, what, what, what? <laughs> Howdy, hey, gentlemen. Sure. Uh, I'm so glad you came back to punish yourselves. Yes, I'm looking forward to part two. <laughs> I, I've been I've been told at the end of the interview the uh, head, this head of the state bar asked Binger about his potential plans to appeal. So I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, you know it's a thing. Appeals uh, are for losers. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit hard and a, not guilty, but okay. yeah, a little bit yeah. difficult. Mm. Uh, okay, so we've got uh, we've got this. Let me get this pulled up because, um, of course, I actually don't have it pulled up offhand, but I will in just a second. Uh, what was it? Because I my computer shut down. Of course it did. Of course it did over the weekend. Um, oh my gosh, what's his name? Binger interview. <laughs> Jeez. Or is it? Uh, yeah, someone think... look up what the uh, penalty for simple assault is so I can go down there and slap him in the face. Miranda warnings. That what it's called. Just wear your COVID mask. We'll know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm very much looking forward to finishing this thing. <laughs> By um, the way, are we more than nine minutes in? From when I left last time. Yeah, we're twenty. We're twenty three minutes in. Ooh. Into what? What's the total? Uh, fifty fifty three oh, minutes. God, I don't it's think only thirty minutes left to go. I don't think it's gonna take as long this time. Okay. Are you gonna do the uh, Serenity Now prayer and Sandy later? Okay, great. <laughs> hey, I'm only here because I convinced my wife that I was gonna sell the shit out of this course we're doing in January eighth. So. Yes, that's that at lawselfdefense.com that. slash advanced, folks. And what course is that? Who might be interested in that? Would be the law defense advanced class for people who want a mastery of self defense law in the United States. If you're from other countries, you can do it too. By the way, I should mention if you if you folks want to buy it for somebody else, you can do that. Just register yourself, and then when you get your confirmation, just email us and uh, at support at lawselfdefense.com. It'll be in your email confirmation, and we'll be happy to change it over to. uh, Are you going to teach me how to get away with a murder? (laughs) <laughs> no, we actually explicitly don't teach that. Oh man, that's we have to too charge bad. a lot more. <laughs> I was gonna buy two courses. <laughs> I, I was gonna buy two courses for the parents of the Michigan shooter, but now I'll only buy one for me. Since make, make friends with someone who owns a crematorium is always good advice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of which, I I always believe in credit where credit is due. I was trawling the internet while driving today, which is safe, um, for more content, always searching for more content. And I came across a video by one Devin, the legal eagle himself, about the uh, the Michigan parents' um, charges. And I went, oh, God. Mm. It was competent. It, it, was, it, did, it was fine. It was fine. I, had, I know. It's two I in a row no, now. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I had no real complaints with it. He didn't in- interject like insane political opinions into it. Uh, he didn't have, he didn't seem to have bad facts or bad case law uh, or anything like that. I was, I was shocked. I was like, okay, Devin, yeah. Yeah. Keep, start weeping. Keep doing, yeah, keep doing this and you'll earn those 2 million subscribers or whatever, you dirty scumbag. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he does enough of these in a row. We'll have to invite him onto the panel. That'll be a, that'll be an interesting well, day. Well, let's in, uh, not law let's not history. get ahead of ourselves, <laughs> <laughs> uh, gentlemen. Right before we get started, I just want to let you know I got this very. Uh, I'm excited for this. It, it is a bottle of Lagavulin Distillers Edition, double matured Lagavulin, which means I think twice the peat tar smoke and death That's, taste that is that is exactly the wrong angle for me i hate that stuff man oh i love I it i can't deal with it no that's a mm. that's a hard pass for me oh 
Do you like the peat stuff, uh, Andrew? You know, I am not really a dark liquor drinker. Sorry. You're, never like acquired the you're a clear liquor drinker? Or? I, well, I mean, is vodka a clear liquor? I looks clear usually I guess. if it's I'll, not I'll, I'll have a vodka tonic but i had a very bad experience with jack daniels when i was 14 and i've never quite recovered from it the amazing thing about jack daniels is everyone who drinks it has a bad experience with it every time every time <laughs> they amazing. drink it, it's just disgusting Terrible gentleman jack liquor. is nice i like that uh that's gentleman jack's okay i had jack gold um which is like it was like 90 bucks or something it was very good uh, By the way, I'm not good. criticizing Jack Daniels. I'm criticizing me at 14. Oh, I'm criticizing Jack Daniels. Okay. Though. <laughs> I'll be very clear on the record on this one. I, you know, if they want to sponsor the show, I'll change my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just came out with a new version of Sinatra Select for I think his 75th birthday, so you can buy that. Oh goodness. Uh, okay, I've actually got it uh, set up here. And so I just need to share it. Of course, there's nothing to watch. It's just this to and the us. chat. Yeah, just this and us. But I'm going <laughs> to... This beautiful demeanor. But I'm going to take that off the screen because we don't need that on the screen since it's just words. Yep. Uh, and and words are not as important as people. But um, unless you gentlemen have anything uh, you want to do right beforehand, I'm pretty much ready to start. Uh, I guess there there's like two super chats I need to read. But other than that, I'd say my soul's prepared, but that's a lie. But let's do it anyway. OK, OK. Uh, Corey Boatwright says you should have a show where you watch sovereign citizen compilations with adult beverages. A no tie event for Bronca, for sure. <laughs> those are, I love those guys. They they're for my motorcycle collection. <laughs> but uh Andrew, have you read that the, if you just read Article Four of the uh, of the not the Constitution, the Articles of Confederation? If you just read Article Four and and yell "free inhabitant," then that is the magic word that gets you out of everything. I've I've read it. The judge doesn't actually know the law or have power unless you give it to him. I heard it gets you a taser unless you are having a bad day. Is it, <laughs> is it Section Three Hundred One of for... the UCC that or Seven Hundred One that they always quote? I can't even remember. Uh, I, I think they go to Admiralty Law a lot. There's of definitely times. some Admiralty Law in there. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever see that video of the uh, the sovereign citizen in the courthouse, like approaching the two like suited up security guards, and he's like, "I'm going in there," and they're like, "You aren't." He's like, "You don't have power over me," and they just <laughs> just tase him down. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> uh, taser. Yeah, Kim Potter will be that security guard next time. Then he'll really regret it. Uh, Loric Project says, hi, Nick. Hope your night is going better than mine. Just had a sheet of glass cut a hunk of skin off my finger. Ew. Ooh. Well, uh, thank why, you for sharing. Why do you have a sheet of glass that would cut for you? Okay, anyway. Um, all right. With that, uh, we will jump right into this thing. Maybe we can actually finish it up tonight without going forever. Um, I'm not hopeful. Here we go. We're at 23 minutes and 10 seconds, which is just a hair before where we cut off. So we have the context. Criminal activity. Um, and, you know, I've prosecuted and I'm continuing to prosecute people who committed those violent acts during this incident. Um, so, you know, I get emails from people saying, why aren't you going after the looters or the arsonists? Uh, thanks. Uh, I am. I have several of those cases on my case. Load, several. So does everybody else in our office. You know, but you have to have the police investigate. You have to have the police arrest. You have to have the police prosecute. You can't go out there and do vigilante justice. Then you, you don't leave, leave me anybody to prosecute. I mean, if Joseph Rosenbaum had, had not been killed that night and I had all the video and photos that we wound up having, I would have charged him with arson and I would have taken him to trial and hopefully convicted him and maybe he would have gone to prison. for. What about the assault? Would you have charged him with the assault? By the way, arson is a deadly force threat in all 50 states. So, Oh, God. What? This uh, he's also not being completely honest here. I mean, no. he needs to have uh, some criminal complaint from. Uh, a, well, he actually no, he doesn't have to have a criminal complaint from a uh, from a police officer. He needs a probable cause statement for sure. But if he has the video evidence and he says, you know, can you do some investigation on this particular person? Can we identify this person? They actually can kind of direct who they want to prosecute. I mean, he has a little bit more power than a oh, woe is me. I'm just at the whoever they arrest. I mean, that's who I got. I mean, that's that's not true. Is he prosecuting gross <laughs> for the gun? 
or the DUI. Unlicensed concealed carry? No, I no, he's not. It's right? amazing. Uh, not doing that, not for the uh, assault with a, a deadly weapon, attempted murder, um, any of those things that he I mean, would I, 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 for. Far be it for me to call a, a prosecutor a, a two-faced bag of garbage, but I mean, of the shoe fits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Many arson, but he wouldn't have been killed. We don't kill people for arson. Right. And, and I think you, you made the point. Like, don't set fire to my house. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say some people have been killed for arson. Um, justifiably. So you try uh, throwing a Molotov in my house, it, it might get hot on your end. Don't try to arson a police station or a federal building either. Uh, you, you might be met with deadly force. Um, very, very dangerous plan. Not a good plan. That uh, the first person that was, that was shot Rosenbaum wasn't net, wasn't a good actor that he did these things that were uh that were criminal um but he can't say child rape said here we have a process for dealing with that and the process is not executing them on the street what was the process for dealing with Rosenbaum who had already been through the system or is he just talking about that night a bad actor who who knows but uh, listen we don't for better or for worse we don't execute child predators uh, but, but, but we do entitle people who are being attacked and having their gun fought over by a child rapist to defend themselves against that attack with deadly force if necessary to prevent their weapon from being taken. Exactly. Yeah. And it's the context of the actual defense claim is just absent in this entire conversation. And it's because I hear this thing all the time. Well, we don't we, we don't execute people for carjacking. We don't execute people for rape. But if you're a rape victim and you have a revolver on you and somebody's raping you, you get to shoot them in the face. That is quintessential stop. grievous bodily harm, no right. doubt. It's not an execution. Yeah. It's an act of self-defense. Those are two different things. Execution is an act of the state. This is an individual defending themselves against a deadly force attack. Yeah. The question is, would, would Binger defend himself in the same situation? I mean, maybe not. Maybe he wouldn't have I think have he pays for that whatever. kind of thing, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> chase me harder chase me faster Aww. uh abe Eckstein says usually the process for rosenbaum is a wood chipper <laughs> oh, no. by someone who's not not in law enforcement someone that is has no training and no experience and it's just okay again it's not like he just came out of the blue to shoot rosenbaum it's not like he was like that guy's doing an arson let me go shoot this is the context of the actual self-defense claim just doesn't exist. They, it's like they, they're like, well, I, we're just blindsided by it. We just have no idea where they would have come up with this uh, this notion that he could defend if, himself. If, if Rittenhouse was being chased across that parking lot by Rosenbaum, completely unarmed, and had tripped over an AR rifle that someone else had left there, never touched one before in his life, he'd be completely privileged to pick it up and use it to defend himself. You don't need to be a cop. To defend yourself or have training to defend yourself or be licensed to defend yourself it's a natural right and you're entitled to use whatever means are at your disposal that fit the legal conditions for that use of force uh blaine storm says thank you for being a man of true steadfast values standing firm and holding your true morals and judgments this weekend beatles are an overrated band of their time and for most of them their time is up <laughs> yes Thank you. Thank you, Blaine Storm, for recognizing the truth. Also, Paul McCartney will burn in hell for that stupid Christmas song. God, I hate it. And <laughs> I never, ever want to hear it again. I hear it every day. <sighs> okay. Walking around with uh, an AR-15. Yeah, but, you know, he believed he did. You know, and that's that's another factor here that goes to his subjective belief. <laughs> he didn't just believe theory. it. <laughs> he was right. <laughs> But I, I love that Binger Binger is talking to Kyle's state of mind completely in absence of any of the testimony. And he, he believed he had some right to just vigilante shoot this person. No, he believed he had a right to be out in the city being a medic when things were going bad and uh, thought he could help people. And the and government had completely failed in its fundamental responsibility to protect people and property. And you, the shocking thing about freedom of thought, expression, and speech is you are allowed a naive thought. You are allowed to naively believe that a group of uh, raging morons burning a city down will allow you to just provide medical care, even if you don't meet their their particular brand of politic. Like, you, you can make that mistake. It's okay. 
I mean, I think all of those guys realized uh, very quickly that that crowd, even though not all of them were being attacked the entire time, were not welcome. They were not welcome at that car source because because of them, that car source is still standing today. It would have been burned to the ground. I mean, that's that's the idea. It kind of looked like they wanted to burn it to the ground. They stole the dumpster from it to light it on fire. That was put out. We know a fire happened on property owned by that, or at least leased by that car source with the uh, the dumpster. So, I mean, this again, this, this notion that it's just all in a vacuum is insane to me. Othamer says, Andrew, I just got a basic ticket for your advanced class. I saw this error message during checkout. Coupon knows does not exist. Truly <laughs> terrible. My only regret <laughs> is we could easily set that coupon. I can't believe I didn't think of that already. <laughs> before, before I'm on the show again, Nick, I'll set that up so we can talk about it the next time. I'll be Sounds happy to great. do that. Sounds great. Let me know uh, when you do it, so I'll get the discount. That'd be nice. <laughs> the nose is the umbra under which all of you rest. Uh, <laughs> he says, also, uh, Gentleman Jack is much better than the standard swill. Very true. Very true. Uh, Brandon Lesko says, I once saw Tyless Bronca scissor kick Angela Lansbury and then said in Richard's voice, Your Honor, you're in MAGA country now, <laughs> Nigeria. Uh Eddie Oliver says, for Andrew, serious question, this one and only time. What would be the circumstances where a person could legally shoot someone committing arson? I'm asking because it seemed like there was a little arson during the BLM riots. So the crime of arson is like the crime of sexual assault. There's lots of degrees, right? So if someone's setting fire to a just a, a garbage pail or something, that is arson. Uh, but what I'm really talking about is arson of a dwelling. So if someone's setting fire to a dwelling, that is a use of deadly force. And deadly force can be used to stop them from doing that. Now, does the dwelling have to be occupied? It's like, presumed for example... to be occupied. Oh, okay. That's true. Okay. In most states, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So there I you think go, guys. I believe it's true in every state. Uh, but but people also get charged with arson for setting a, a dumpster on fire, for setting a car on fire. Uh, if there's obviously not people in those circumstances, then it, th that would not necessarily be a deadly force. Yeah, arson me. arson is typically the intentional destruction of property by fire which you are not privileged to destroy. Uh that's that's about it. Um Zachary B, thank you for the uh donation. All right, back to this. You know, this is a kid who claims to have been in some sort of youth cadet uh police program in Illinois he had, claims uh, it. You know, he could have disproved it or something. I mean, I Yeah, again, did you check? Did you did you do the even not hard basic? to verify? The police department would have records, <laughs> right? Yeah, they presumably they would have records of it. Um, he says he got his vest from that program. Uh, the but but again, uh, if you can't disprove it, what evidence do you have to the contrary? You didn't have a single witness say no, he didn't do that. I was in that program at that time. He wasn't. And there. they would have. Yeah, they checked. You know, they checked. They yeah. want they wanted to catch him on anything. And they would also know that that testimony was coming. Uh, but anyway, here we go. I think he had uh, notions or delusions of grandeur that, uh, you know, he'd gotten some imprimatur from the local police to go out there and do what he wanted to do. And, and they approved of it. And so uh, he took the law into his own hands. Um, and that's certainly not something we want anybody to do. But a 17 year old kid. OK, we actually do that all the time. I mean, that's what self-defense is, literally. The privilege of self-defense is literally taking the law into your own hands. We, we all have legal privileges. <laughs> it's it's not just wrong. The, the, the police is right. The state's right to enforce laws is derived from the people's right to enforce laws. We grant them a license to utilize our right collectively to enforce the law. Citizens' arrest existed before arrest. Because hmm. that's how that's how the state gets its power to affect the rest. The state doesn't get any. It's I, I think it's what the, the Ninth Amendment or the Tenth Amendment. The state gets no power uh, or right other than those granted to it by the citizenry or the several states. That'd be the tenth. And the several states get that power from the citizenry themselves. Like those, the the power to arrest and enforce law comes from the people. Because if you, in the absence of a government, it's enforced tribally. Uh, that's, that's how humankind works. That's the idea of natural rights distilled down into its purest essence. And you don't, we don't give up that right just because the state has the power. We set parameters for the state 
and uh, people are not actually bound by those same parameters. They're bound. Um, they're, I would say they're more loosely bound because they're not subject to constitutional concerns about fourth amendment and stuff like that. However, they're, they're also not granted the same level of presumption that the state has in enforcing law with regards to utilization of force, for example, to affect arrest and things like that. But, but again, it's not vigilanteism because it's actually a natural right to do that. Vigilanteism is to go out determining that you are going what to. What the laws are is right. what vigilanteism actually is. Yeah. Say, all right, you're not allowed to drink alcohol. So if I see, I'm going to go into a bar and break this place down with sledgehammers because what I say is alcohol should be prohibited. Yeah. It's and, making up your own laws and enforcing them. And uh, of course, that's not what Kyle Rittenhouse is doing. Um, and and again, for well, someone... in a sense, I mean, he was shooting down pedophiles. That's not technically an existing <laughs> statute, but not yet. Just kidding, folks. Just kidding. It was an act of self defense. It was not an act of vigilantism. You know, you Just talked about Kyle's law, way. but I'm going to talk about Ricada's law. <laughs> <laughs> pedophiles, gun them. No. Uh, uh, also, Robert Barnes in the chat. Hey, what's up, Robert? Uh, he did say, "Hey, Robert." That, uh, there's a there's a picture. Uh, Kyle Rittenhouse has a picture of himself in the cadet program too. So it's it's not like it's a, a there's no evidence for it. Even though he wouldn't have to have that picture to make the claim. <laughs> I can but assure there, you a thousand times over. If it was a fabrication, we would know it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Binger would have found out and told us. Uh, in a rut says twenty for the hot tub sloot drink you. Okay. Uh, Goober Gabber says, remember big boy saying something along the lines of it can't be an ambush. If you don't know someone is hiding from you. Absolute clowns. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was weird. Cause again, Rosenbaum uh, runs up and he goes behind those cars and waits. He just waits until Kyle passes the cars. And then he comes out around the car back behind him. And uh, they were saying that Kyle was, was chasing down and ambushing Rosenbaum. Despite the fact that he, seemingly lost track of him uh, i love i loved when binger would keep saying how, how short rosenbaum was and yet rosenbaum's weight and kyle's weight were exactly the same and you know wrestling mma boxing they don't separate the classes by height <laughs> no they separate by weight because weight is what accurately represents the strength of the individual it's funny if you ever see one of the six foot two guys fighting at 155 or whatever get clocked by a short stack with giant shoulders, <laughs> they, just, they fold Boom. immediately. Yep. Oh, Zachary B, thank you for the very large donation. I noticed that you're uh, you've got no chats coming through, buddy. If if YouTube is censoring your super chats, just tag me. Um, I really do appreciate the large uh, super chat there, but if if YouTube is censoring you out, tag me. I'll happily. Uh, read it and mods. If I don't see it, please, uh, please uh, either shoot it to me on discord or just tag me in, in the chat. I want to make sure and get his message read. And then finally, Pooh Zerger said, would Potter's attorneys have any conflicting issues for testifying? If it would expose her to liability for her civil trial. Uh, if you were personal friends with Potter, what would your advice for her be taking the stand? When I you're mean, worried about criminal peril and civil peril, you're worried about criminal peril. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Because if, if you're spending uh, in the next decade or two in prison, you're not really worried about the civil liability. And also a lot of uh, Potter's civil liability is likely going to fall on the shoulders of the Brooklyn center police department and the city of Brooklyn center. Right. That's, that's who they want to squeeze uh, for the juice because Potter likely has very modest means. Um, you know, she's probably got a, maybe a 403 B or she might be uh, might have been going for a pension. I don't know what the what their compensation. Well, program she's conviction, like. convicted. She'll lose a pension, right? But if so. uh, if she's not convicted on the on this, but on the civil thing, they go after her. I mean, they're not going to get much out of whatever she has. Uh, they're they're going to be targeting the the city actors there. Um, the so, civil the civil really doesn't matter, folks. I mean, in the greater scheme of things, you can always make more money. I mean, it hates to be made broke. But uh, it's nothing compared to be being put in a cage with a lot of unpleasant people. Yep, uh, absolutely. Um, here we go. Um, it's it's unfortunate, you know. Two people lost their lives and and didn't have to. Where'd they lose them? And let's talk about uh, Kyle Rittenhouse uh, specifically. He he took the stand uh, in his own defense. What's uh, what's your assessment of of 
uh, how he did and um, how what impact that had. Yeah, an interesting on, question. On the trial. Well, he beat your ass. Never in my this. life, uh, and I've done over a hundred jury trials. I, I not all defendants testify, obviously, but I've never seen a defendant testify and then be cross-examined, and there's no redirect. They got him off the stand as quickly as they could. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you did Why? just cross-examine him for, for three, three hours. straight hours. <laughs> Yeah, also, why? Because there's nothing really to do in particular. Maybe they just did, did so their well. job on direct. Maybe yeah. they did their job on direct. They didn't need to redirect. Maybe you were so ineffectual on cross. They didn't need to redirect. This is like the guy whose friends are holding him back from fighting the MMA professional fighter, right? Oh, if only they'd let me go. I would have kicked his ass. Oh, but they, <laughs> they, got, uh, they got him out of there as quickly as possible. It's like, uh, uh, maybe that's one version. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Uh, it, it's, Maybe that was the luckiest day of your life. It's similarly ridiculous because what Binger did on cross was effective for his for jury instructions. Was effective for lesser included. He got particular statements he wanted Kyle Rittenhouse to say, and he got them out. But it wasn't particularly effective for the jury. And when all of us who are watching on the panel, um, and I, I assume you felt kind of the same, Andrew. Um, but we're watching going, man, I really wish Kyle wouldn't have taken this or wouldn't be taking the stand. But then he gets done. It's like, you know, I mean, he did a pretty good job, though. Uh, so he I, did I, I don't like it because I don't like the odds. So right. I think it, I think it worked out fine. I think he did fine for himself. He didn't blow anything up. Uh, but it's like going to the roulette table and rolling, you know, the wheel once and winning big as opposed to, you know, those aren't the odds. I mean, if you play long enough, it's going to go bad. And you don't know ahead of time that you're going to win big on the first spin. So I think they won big on the first. I mean, I think Kyle did an unbelievable job for an 18-year-old kid being subject to, let's face it, professional in interrogation for three hours. I think it was amazing. <laughs> but you don't know that going in. It could have gone badly sideways. You don't know right. what's going to come out of that kid's mouth. Yeah, but the, the my and I, I agree with everything you just said, but the, the point I was making is so all these people who are like, this is a bad idea, this is a bad idea, this is a bad idea, and he gets done and everybody goes, Well, I mean, he did a pretty good job. That yeah. means that his lawyers were going the same thing. They're like, he did a pretty good job. We probably don't need to redirect because they don't need to rehabilitate his image in front of the jury. The only thing a redirect does is open up potentially another statement for cross to then be put in for a, right. a subsequent instruction or for him to say something stupid. It, so was, it was perfect the way they did it. It was fine. I yeah. mean, you know, if you're going to put him up there, they did a very brief direct. Of course, how long cross is going to last is not up to them. That's one of the risks. Um, but I think Kyle did a fine job. I think he uh, didn't hurt himself in any meaningful way. And, uh, and he presented himself to the jury, which I'm sure the jury appreciated. They, you know, in self-defense cases, the juries like to hear from the defendant. Why do you have to kill these people? <laughs> you know, are you a mass murderer or, you know, can you tell us there's a good reason? So I think it worked out fine. And, you know, for me, it's I don't know Kyle, right? I've never met Kyle. I've never spoken to him. I don't know what he's like in person. His lawyers do. So I guess, you know, maybe they had a better assessment of what his character and strength of will would be like on that witness stand. And they made the judgment call. And that's it's their position to do that. I was nervous. Um, but and the kid did brilliantly. Yeah. Uh, Kurt, I got a question for you from Contrarian420. He says, hey, Uncivil, what's your stance on COVID mandates? Oh, I oppose the mandates. Yeah, I oppose the mandates. I, I, don't, I, I don't think that the government should be mandating vaccines, particularly the federal government. Um, when you look at state level authority, you have a different argument. So like New York City doing the mandates is much more in line with Jacobson versus Massachusetts, of course. Jacobson dealt with smallpox, which had a 30% fatality rate and COVID doesn't. So the facts are di different. But uh, the federal government mandates make zero sense. And I, I think as a matter of general policy, unless you're talking about, you know, smallpox like numbers, <laughs> They're they're not a good idea as a matter of state and local policy either. That's my view. Uh, and Alec Urban says, how did Kyle do on the stand? Binger, well, he spanked me, but not the way I like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Back to this. Because they knew this is a kid who can, they can only fill his head with so much coaching and then it's going to break down. And after five or six hours on the stand, it's not going to last. Um, so they had. A, you couldn't they had break a, him in three hours, Dick. 
Yeah, why? An, an 18 year old. You couldn't break him in three hours. Why didn't you? I, he couldn't last five to six hours. If it was a facade, if it was just his head filled with stuff, why didn't you break him in three hours? And and if if it was only going to take five to six, why didn't your cross take five to six? I mean, if that's a critical element of prosecuting a murderer, right? Then you would expect the prosecutor to do An their active job. Shooter, a mass murderer. <laughs> it's, it's I mean, insane. practically Hitler. <laughs> well, I mean, at least Paul. He's working up to it. He's only eighteen. Yeah, he's got time. He's got time. Uh, if, as long as he hangs around those proud boys a little more, I think that'll that'll really do it. You know, they spent months, uh, I'm sure, and and money and time with with whoever's out there helping to to prep him for trial. Um, and I think on his uh, direct examination, I think he did a nice job. Uh, you know, he 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 did what they asked him to do. He he spent months and money and time prepping to fight for his innocence. Binger didn't spend money and time preparing for this trial. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, here, one second. I think I got the message from Zachary B. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Zachary B says, all I'm saying is thank you. Been watching both trials with you all and picked up the hardcover for my conceal and carry for my, uh, for my pops. Thank you both. Hey, you're welcome, Zachary B. Thanks for getting that message to the mods. I really wanted to make sure it got through. I don't know why YouTube would censor that out, but they're stupid. So they do. Uh, okay, here we go. Came across. Uh, he looked presentable. Um, he told his side of the story. He had his day in court. Um, there was a time in which he uh, started breaking down uh, and crying, um, which I thought was uh, unconvincing. Uh, I thought that it was prompted by his own selfish fear or what he claimed to be his fear at that time, which I think is a less than sympathetic uh, prompt for crying. I think the, the tears were manufactured crocodile tears, and I think the jury saw right through them. Um, I hate and, you. Really? <laughs> <laughs> that's why they... The verdict would suggest otherwise. <laughs> that's why they voted to acquit, was because they saw right through his charade on the stand. <laughs> what a pile of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy Woo. Woo. Uh, oh goodness gracious okay sorry <laughs> let's see what else he has to say about that and there was no remorse uh, for anything uh, he was unapologetic no concern about the lives that he took uh, none of that And you know, well first of all he did express concern he was regretful that he had to shoot those people trying to kill him uh, but how much remorse is he supposed to feel because he had to shoot people who are trying to kill you uh yeah that's that's always the the weird it's not thing like you killed them drunk driving in a in a self-defense case right you have to look you have to feel bad that the person died but also not like to the point where it's weird i they mean they kind of made the call right right but you can't look cold if you're going to be in front of the jury because no. for some reason juries don't like that even though if they were killed you know if they were about to be killed and defended themselves they probably wouldn't feel too bad for the dead guy um, or if, even worse, if like one of their family members or something like that were attacked, they wouldn't feel so bad. But uh, this, I, oh my gosh! But how you uh, feel on the inside and how you feel in front of a jury <laughs> are two different things. If you're prudent. But he's also leaving out the fact that that breakdown. I don't. It didn't look sad to me. It looked traumatized to yeah. me. Is Binger not aware that Kyle spent? I don't know, like the first two weeks of his incarceration puking every night because of things. Is he not aware of him seeing mental health counseling? Does he not care? Has Does he never not have like a rape victim? I mean, th th it's very similar to how rape victims feel. I mean, this is a violent attack upon your person. And if you're a normal law-abiding person, you're not accustomed to being violently attacked. It's a traumatic event, whether it's a rape or it's a beatdown or it's whatever Rosenbaum was planning for him. It's a terrifying violent you, we normally go about our lives lawfully, minding our own business, doing our normal things, and somebody gives you a beat down. It's it's Everyone a life changing. Takes a beating event. sometimes. I took a beating yesterday. What? I'm kidding. I'm just making oh. Else. I was like, what happened? I thought you, <laughs> I thought you had an anecdote. <laughs> and some people suffer that kind of thing, a mugging and or whatever, and and they never recover. I mean, it breaks them as human beings, and they never recover. What? Other people are resilient. Normally, because they suffered it in the past, and they just it's learned learned how to take <laughs> learned how to take a beating from time to time, as Krauss would say. 
it's amazing what will set people off too, because if, if you've gone your whole life without ever really like being in some sort of danger, even a, you know, a car accident that ended up with everyone. Okay. But you know, the airbags deploy and stuff like that. And, and it's, it's really rattling. Some people don't drive again after that, or they're very hesitant to, I mean, yeah. trauma affects people in unpredictable ways because it's trauma and to be chased, uh, Kyle went through an exceptional level of trauma first to be chased by a crazy short pedophile um, and then end up shooting him going circling back to kind of check on him or whatever he was going to do there before the mob started saying, Hey, 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 that guy just shot that guy. Let's get him dome him cranium him or whatever they're saying. And then he has to run and then getting attacked again as he's trying to just get away. Like that level of trauma is not something you get through where an entire group of people turns on you at the same time and you know that if things go in all, in all a bad direction you're dead uh, and you're dead in a nasty ugly way being and it's not up to you and... other people are making the decisions about whether you'll be pushed past that line right i mean when i was 40 i lost my mind decided i would learn how to skydive so i went to the local skydiving place and the first jump's always a tandem jump you know you're strapped to somebody else Right. We went out the plane. I loved it. The free fall was great. It was fantastic. I signed up immediately for parachute school. And the next time I went up, I was, you know, basically by myself with my own parachute. A couple of instructors jump out with you. And man, when that plane got higher and higher and higher up to jump altitude, I could feel my brain shrinking, like 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 crunching a plastic water bottle, crunch, 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 getting smaller and smaller. And if you had asked me at 13,500 feet what my name was, I would not have been able to tell you. The only thing I was able to do was throw my ass out of that stupid airplane. <laughs> and, and that was only because I didn't want to be the loser still on the plane when it landed. You know, the guy who couldn't do it. I was. I I'll was take it, man. I'll take it. I'll be the loser. Let's let's like, let's go down. I'm taking the slow way. Screw all y'all. Terrified. Once I was out of the plane, I was fine. I loved it. The free fall was great. Oh, the parachute opened up. Everything was great. Uh, first you did jump, open, that's nice that's a nice say, bonus. oh yeah <laughs> i'll tell you the story sometime my first two jumps i had two parachute malfunctions but i obviously i survived <laughs> i believe it i believe it uh so anyway every time i jumped i was equally terrified going out that door i did six jumps i was scared shitless every time i had to go out that door and then i gave it up i'm like it's not going to get better i see the other people skydiving they walk out their door like it's nothing yeah to me, it was horrifying. So obviously, this was not for me. But it wasn't traumatic because I was doing it to myself. Imagine if someone was throwing me out that goddamn door against my will. That would have been a traumatic experience. And that's what Kyle Rittenhouse was facing. Yeah, it's, uh, again, it's an un unreasonable or unfathomable for most people level of trauma that he went through. And then Binger's like, <laughs> he's up on stand just lying about how sad he feels. It was all selfish self-interest. Uh, and, and the other thing, by the way, you can be self-interested. You can actually break down in tears because you think that some, some creepo like Binger might try to ruin the rest of your life and, and realize that he might succeed like that. That pressure could also break a person. Um, here we go. You know, I get it. You got to walk a fine line in a self-defense case. You can't be saying I'm legally justified, but I feel bad that I killed those people. So, you know, I get that. Um, on, on cross, I did my best. Uh, I, I don't take uh, an, a ton amount of pride in it. I think I could have done better. Um, you think? I, I tried my best to knock some holes in it. I think that uh, I, I, I'm, I view cross. You get the gay club. <laughs> oh, come on now. <laughs> as, um, as, a, as, a, as if you had a block of marble in front of you and you've got to sculpt something. You can't take a sledgehammer and hit it in the middle and crack it in half. You got to go at it from the sides. You got to chip away uh, inch by inch, uh, part by part, and eventually you get something that you're looking for here. So uh, sometimes, sometimes that's what you do. Other times you are the sledgehammer on cross. And if you want to know when you're the sledgehammer on cross, ask uh Ask a guy, ask a defense attorney who defends criminal sexual misconduct claims and has to break like a 16 year old girl on the stand because she lied about the assault. And you have to just 
pound and p- that's the wrong language, but he, <laughs> he brought, you have to sledgehammer uh, the marble block straight down the middle. You have to attack it. You can't chip away when, uh, when your client is, when their life is on the line um, over a false accusation, you have to call the liar a liar and you have to do it ruthlessly and completely because if you allow the tears and the emotion and the status of, of that being uh, a younger person, just because they're a younger female doesn't make their uh, accusation automatically credible, except in the eye, in the minds of a jury, it kind of does. And so you have to. It's so And it's so hard to do. It's so hard to do effectively because it's so easy to go too far over the line one way or the other. We actually saw that in this trial, in the, uh, the current trial we're watching um yeah yeah, where the uh the mother of uh right got subject to cross-examination right she's up there in a stand Mm -hmm. on direct and she's weeping and crying and he borrowed money for the car wash and his girlfriend and all this kind of stuff man earl gray did a fantastic job on cross Mm -hmm. he stayed right on that line right He, he didn't appear to abuse her but at least he also didn't let her just lie about what the situation was yeah, he did it very effectively. Uh, I mean, the the thing that I'm most glad about, though, is that Dante Wright brought a scale to weigh the car wash <laughs> just to make sure the appropriate I'm amount sure I'm of... I'm getting the right way to suds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, sure I'm getting 10, 10 grams of suds. Johnny Bunn says, yep, after he was really offended by what Kyle said about him and Krause uh, on the You Are Here podcast with Elijah, he destroyed them both. Um, healthy fiesta says, have any of you gentlemen seen the video of 14 year old in Philly pew pew, a burglar in the face. Always love the content. I have not seen that video. No, that sounds uh, hilarious. I heard about it. Right. I, I think the mom was doing one. something and the, the 14 year old came to the rescue when the burglar invaded. Um, Idaho plumber says, love your show, Nick. I'm late. So I'm watching at two X speed. That sovereign citizen who was tased that you mentioned beginning of the stream that happened at my local courthouse here in the very tip of, of Idaho. <laughs> very cool. Uh, okay, here we go. Back to this. Um, I tried to chip away where I could, uh, at portions of this story that didn't make sense. Uh, and I think that I got him to admit some important things. You know, one of the parts of this case that was always going to be a concern was before the defendant uh, shot and killed Joseph Rosenbaum, there was a gunshot that went off about two and a half seconds before that in that in that very same area. It was shot off by Minsky. a third party by the name of Joshua Zeminski, who was tangentially related to the case throughout. And in their opening statements, there was some emphasis on this, that Rittenhouse felt, you know, that shot was a danger to him. He heard it from behind him. So he's turning and reacting and you know, for all I know, it's coming from this guy who's chasing me and now I got to kill him because I think he's got a gun. And that was a concern I had was that they were going to lean. I think he overstated what they said on opening there by a tad. Uh, I think they just merely mentioned the fact that there was a gunshot uh, immediately preceding the shooting of Rosenbaum. I don't think they said he was definitely scared uh, of no, the gunshot. The uh, tone, the environment, yeah, the, the circumstances. But I, I don't actually remember. So if the chat does remember specifically what was said and Binger's right, I would love to hear it. But I, I don't think so. Um, here we go. And heavily into that. Um, I'm prosecuting Joshua Zeminski for arson. I got a trial against him at the end of January. Are you going to prosecute him for a discharge of a firearm, uh, an unlawful discharge of a firearm that he's not legally allowed to carry? How about unlawful carrying of a firearm? How about reckless endangerment, felony, reckless endangerment? It's that like rounds we- coming down somewhere. I'm I'm prosecuting him for arson. What about the other three felonies that you could prosecute him for for that gunshot that's on video that you know was him? I mean, if you need help, you know we're available. We can sub in for Plus, you. There's got to be something for that hideous neck tattoo he's got. There's got to be some kind of charge. <laughs> yeah, well, indecent exposure. <laughs> it's an exposure of an indecent neck tattoo. Uh, and that wife of his. <laughs> oh my god. Why? Now, now, now. That screeching demon. Now, now, now. <laughs> Let's not, uh, let's not sold the man's spouse. We bit different people like different things. Let's, you know, be kind. The amazing thing about that is, is again, he has the power to absolutely prosecute crimes that are caught on video that have less ambiguity than Kyle Rittenhouse and are serious felonies from a routine felony offender. Like, why won't you? Oh, I'm going to prosecute him for the arson. I mean, how about the, how about the gunshot? It's it, what's is it a misdemeanor arson 
I mean, cause the arson that he's prosecuting him for, I think is the trailer that he burned in the middle of the street, which is so what, I mean, you shouldn't have burned the trailer, but you've got several more important and impactful crimes. One that led to, uh, perhaps tangentially, as you say, to the deaths of two other people in the maiming of a third. I mean, maybe you should prosecute that. I, I don't know. Just a thought. I think he's a knucklehead. I have no idea why he fired that single shot. Just off. a knucklehead. <laughs> wacky, wacky Zeminski. They are going to prosecute those knuckleheads. <laughs> oh my God. Certainly didn't help situation. Um, so I was very concerned about what they were going to use that to try and justify the self defense. What a goof. But Sound what I got is. Mr. Rittenhouse to admit on the witness stand is that that shot had nothing to do with any of this. He that was not a good admission. admission. He didn't think it came from Rosenbaum, didn't think it had anything to do with anything. Right. So um, which I thought was Rosenbaum important. was justified regardless. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a big win. That was a mistake yeah. by Kyle. It didn't hurt him, obviously, but it's a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. He should have said, you know, I heard the gunshot and it, it made me scared. Uh, I'm scared he when I have, hear gunshots. He might have told other people that he hadn't heard it. Yeah, maybe. I yeah. mean, he might have been trapped in that way. And of maybe. course, I would never <laughs> encourage a client to lie on the witness stand. Of course. So. Right. Uh, J Jason McConnell says, when I was five, my father was a witness in a national case involving FedEx. He took me and later told me it was to teach me to never fear judges and lawyers. 16 years later, he rented me an Olive Garden waitress in Minneapolis to lose my virginity. <laughs> Education is curious. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, there you go. First of all, it's, it's Hospitaliano. I mean, whole new levels. <laughs> Talk about toss the infant in salad. Would you uh would you like these salad and breadsticks? You can get this breadstick if you know what I'm saying. Uh <laughs> thank you, Jason. Uh your your father sounds like an interesting chap. <laughs> Here we go. Um, because now we're clearly just talking about an unarmed man who's chasing after you. You know, and Rosenbaum jumps in the air with his hands up in the midst of all this. So it's clear that this is an unarmed person, you know, and he, he couldn't possibly have a knife or a gun in his waistband. I mean, it's clear yeah. he's unarmed because he jumped. Uh, he couldn't oh, have, yeah. well, he didn't have the bag at that time. So the moment, the moment he lunges for the gun, he's arming himself with an AR rifle, Car Kyle's AR rifle. That, yeah. That's all that matters. It's uh, no different than if he was picking up that AR rifle from a table. It's even worse because he's simultaneously arming himself and disarming Kyle. Right. Committing robbery, aggravated robbery. Yeah. You fight Some for someone's things. gun. It's yeah. a deadly force attack. Yep. I know some states like Florida have stand your ground laws where anybody who comes Could your state too, motherfucker. Yeah. Wisconsin <laughs> so sorry. has stand your ground No, you can you can motherfucker all day. That's fine by me. <laughs> but yeah, Wisconsin has it. It's too. actually no different. The law is no different in Wisconsin and in Florida. Florida is not a hard stand your ground state like Texas is. It's, yeah, it's the same thing. So not in Wisconsin. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I, I waited in my closing to a bar fight. You know, unfortunately, we got a lot of in Wisconsin. Yeah, he doesn't he know said, his own law. He didn't read the jury instructions. Well, he doesn't know Florida law. Probably. Oh, who knows what he knows? Jesus. Uh, what he knows is he really didn't like Kyle and he just equated him being um, chased without provocation with, a, with found... a mutual combat bar fight right like those exactly. are the same things yes it's uh and by the way if if uh, there are cases in wisconsin where if someone were in a bar fight and grabbed a gun later like they went out and grabbed the gun from their car and came back into the bar and sure. shot someone that that was uh that was uh, i think that was considered a murder wasn't it it was in yeah. fact yes yeah it's it's almost like a bar fight uh isn't necessarily the same thing but there are facts which could bring it to a similar thing, but it is different. A bar fight is wildly different from being chased without provocation. And the jury, Binger, I don't know if you noticed, but they didn't find provocation. Uh, point of legal or education for their for the audience. Uh, while, if you have no duty to retreat, but you do retreat and you retreat to safety, if you then re-enter the zone of danger, you lose the self-defense. So you can't exit the zone of danger like that bar fight and then decide to re-enter with a shotgun because like you've already exited the fight yeah. so self-defense is over it now. becomes a second fight yeah it yes, becomes a second fight that you're now starting right so that's right there's your pro tip for the day a little self-defense law
Yeah, the the, ama the amazing thing is self-defense is focused on your safety more than anything else. So the, the reason that you're justified in the homicide is because you are, that is the last resort that you are ultimately safe in. If you have, even if you have no duty to retreat, as Kurt says, but yet you opt to retreat, or like, let's say you opt to use a taser, for example, and you neutralize the threat with the taser, you're not then privileged to shoot the person in the face. If for uh, any reason, what was an apparent threat is no longer an imminent apparent threat. And th that could be for any reason. It doesn't matter. I mean, this is the whole Texas, Chad Reed, Kyle Carruth thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the guy, I mean, this, it's my position on it. And I'm not saying right. it's universal truth, but my position is he shoved that guy off the porch and then the guy with the rifle turned and shot him from 10 feet away. In that moment, the guy who shoved them off the porch, was he a dick? Was he a jerk? All those things, fine. But in that moment, was he an eminent deadly force threat when you shot him twice in the chest? I don't see it. Was he 569 milliseconds before, as some people like to say? Maybe, sure, okay. But in the moment you did it, was he? And right. I don't see that. And that's the critical question of that case. That's the fact question the jury has to resolve if it goes to a trial. They will have to determine if if in the moment that he shot, if the threat uh, existed. And if it did exist, But that is justified. the question. The question is right. not, do you get to shoot someone because they shoved you off your porch? Right. That's a, that's <laughs> that, that's not the legal question. Yeah, and uh, and and that's in the, the same thing here in Kyle's situation. The thing with, with Kyle is he does respond initially with the 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 brandishing towards rosenbaum as he's being chased and if rosenbaum had stopped and said whoa and uh, kyle had shot him bad shoot yeah and and that's what i see in texas the same thing if, if, if rosenbaum had, had come to a complete stop and no longer been advancing and half a second later kyle rittenhouse shoots him up the bad shoot he's no longer a threat so here we go back to the back to the thing here. Johnson, we like our, our beer and uh, there's bar fights, right? Uh, two unarmed guys, they're throwing punches or whatever. Well, God forbid the next bar fight, you know, some drunk idiot comes at you, pushes you, shoves you, takes a swing at you. And now I get to pull out my semi-automatic pistol and kill him in cold blood. Maybe, <laughs> maybe if you reasonably fear for your life, if he punches you in the face and your head hits the bar and you land on the ground, he's advancing towards you. Yeah. Shoot him. He's much bigger. There's friends behind him. By the way, it doesn't have to be a semi-automatic revolver works the same way. If he <laughs> grabs Revolvers a bottle, many people. he grabs a bottle, he grabs a chair. Uh, he throws a chair out of the way. He's got a bottle in his hand. He, uh, and he's he takes got a step forward. He's got a steel toed boot on and goes to kick you in the face. I mean, there's any number of reasons why you would have be justified a to boot shoot. with a dagger on it, like in Roadhouse, for some reason. Oh yeah! Oh, be, I want one of those. Don't you? Be polite. Like be click polite. my click my heel together, like uh, like Dorothy, and then I turn into Patrick Swayze or whatever, and then I can do that. Well, it wasn't him that had the boot knife, though, right? No, no. It was the was the asshole coming into the bar. Yeah, it was the weird guy. But uh, we're closed. Well, all these people, they're here to have a good time. So are we. You're too stupid to have a good time. Kick, <laughs> twist leg. Oh, someone's seen the movie more than once. <laughs> that movie's awesome. I love that movie. Uh, here we go. I mean, that's essentially what was going on here. And that's essentially what the jury said. <laughs> well, or, or not. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't at all what was going on. First of all, um, there's a there'd be a different question if the person was at the bar I mean, it'd be kind of weird, but if they're at the bar with an AR-15 strapped on their chest and then uh -huh. someone starts a fight with them, that would be a different situation entirely to what you just said. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, and and I, again, I, I can't abide by that. That's that's going to lead to tragedy if that's the message. People okay, think. mom. Right. And I, I think there was some testimony from others that saw this Rosenbaum operating before that he, you know, appeared obviously a little bit off and a little bit others off. were just avoiding him. They, you know, walked the other way and that kind of diffused it. Uh, a little and, different when he's chasing uh, you across the fucking parking lot. <laughs> I mean, he was um, trying to, wasn't he trying to avoid him? <laughs> yeah. It the, seemed the like the maximal level of avoidance, like running away. <laughs> and, and Again, and uh, all of those people that, of course, the difference in testimony and who knows what Miranda knows about this case. I'm Not surmising much. 
surmising very little, but um, the all of those people had multiple people with them. I mean, that's Rosenbaum threatening. And I, I assume they're just going to leave out the statement of, if I get you alone, I'll just kill you. I mean, I, I guess there's... Well, he doesn't know, believe that statement ever happened because it wasn't caught on video. Even right. though his own witness said it, he doesn't believe that happened. And it was corroborated by another witness. Like it wasn't yeah. just a singular witness who, who said this, it was two different witnesses. One of them being a state's witness. One so thing to keep in mind about Miranda, he's in the New York state bar, right? Head of the yeah, New York state bar. Yeah. So he's, he's no in probably a New York city resident um, in New York city. As someone who's lived there, uh, anyone who has an AR 15 is like someone who like wears live rattlesnakes around their neck for casual, which dress. is something you might see in New York city to be fair. Maybe that would be more the, acceptable to them. The so the mere Cowboy fact guy. that Kyle Rittenhouse has an AR-15 is such such aberrant behavior to them uh, that he's automatically guilty of something. He can't possibly be in the right. Yeah, he's a sideshow. He's a freak show in New York City. Right. But in Wisconsin, uh, now seeing an AR-15 on someone isn't an everyday sight. But it's also not out of the realm of possibility that you just see someone with a rifle for whatever no, listen, reason. I'll be honest. I, I see these groups sometimes, these open carry groups. And and folks, I remind you, I'm a Second Amendment absolutist. I think you absolutely have the right to do this. Uh, but they, they decide to make kind of a little local demonstration. They'll go to a local Starbucks, all carrying their AR-15s and stuff like that. <laughs> I have to tell you, man, if I'm in that Starbucks, especially if I'm with my family and you walk in with an AR, you have a hundred percent of my fucking attention because I don't know who you are. And right. that's not normal. I mean, concealed carry is normal. There's, there's no normal reason to be open carrying an AR 15 around in a Starbucks. That's. Well, we'll see Sorry. what NYS RPA does for us. Maybe the Supreme court will say you have a right to bear concealed or open state. Has well, to pick I, one I think the they other. have a right to do it. I just think it's poor judgment. And when they're doing it, First of all, they're going to get 100% of my attention, and I'm a Second Amendment absolutist. Every other mom in that Starbucks has now become completely anti-gun because you just terrorize the fuck out of them and their little kids that are with them. I, I just think yeah. it's poor judgment. I'm not saying you don't have the right to do it. I just think it's poor judgment. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Uh, let's see. Uh, Aaron Katrin says, how's that Lagavulin? I was sipping on some Blanton's earlier. Pros, this is this is ridiculously good. It's actually um, they toned I'll just send down you some moss and dirt, and you can eat that. It'll be about the same. No, it's it's Lagavulin sixteen is one of my favorite, just kind of regular whiskeys. This is not that. This is it's got a little bit of peatiness, but it's um, I think the second maturation or whatever that they call it. I don't care. Um, really, it mellows out the flavor a lot. <laughs> Sounds it's, kind of Joseph Rosenbaum, really, but. <laughs> I matured twice. Uh, by the way, I do have a new poll up. Uh, who's more dangerous, Rosenbaum, Binger, or Rittenhouse? So feel free to participate in that poll chat. Should be at the top of your window there. All right, back to this. Got to. Um, and, you know, uh, that was the difference. Now, you said something before that I know trial lawyers, uh, we always beat ourselves up. Uh, we're probably our worst critics internally, but you said Apparently not. <laughs> you, thought you could have done some things better. It now you thought you could have done some things better is not the harsh criticism that I would give. So he's certainly not his worst critic uh, on this one, but holy cats. Like, look, uh, Miranda is a commercial litigator or whatever he does uh, there. So, or I know he's IP, right? Kurt, did we? Apparently. That? Okay. I don't know, you know, maybe he's very competent in that field of law, but just think for a moment that you have to listen to how this guy talks in a courtroom. Can I ask Kurt before, before you go on, Kurt, so you do IP litigation mostly? Is it trial work or? Uh, my, work? my stuff is transactional. Oh, transactional. Okay. I'm just wondering, because I've only really done criminal defense type stuff, but I, I wonder if the tone is much different when you're litigating you know, other stuff at trial. Yeah, I haven't had the pleasure. I'm looking to actually bail on my field, though, because I've been doing it 14 years. I'm getting tired of it, so I'm looking to do something else, but yeah. can always try skydiving. Are, are, are you hiring? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Emery Kalam says, 
this my XR15 shorty bullpup that I bought in Germany in 1990. The bolt has gone forward. The weapon is fired, etc. Uh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Thanks. I don't, I don't understand if that was a reference. I don't get it, but I appreciate it anyway. Uh, That's what she said. Attorney Tom, don't you dare! Don't you dare! I will go. I will go personally stand next to Binger to prove I'm taller than him. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you impugn and besmirch my height, good sir? Uh, here we go. Now, oh, with a little bit benefit of hindsight, now uh, is there something that you're thinking maybe you could have gone into? I know it's a tight oh road. God. You don't want to push too hard because you don't know what kind of answer you're going to get. But this is like a girlfriend. Did you think of a snapback now? Now, at, you know, months after the fight, do you have a snapback now? Yes. Something you didn't. Oh, that was the wife alarm. Sorry. <laughs> so, my time might be limited, folks. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. If you need to, if you need to go, just. Oh, she'll fine. let me know. <laughs> Here we go. Maybe you could have done a little differently. You know, one of the um, things that I was on the fence about at, at that particular moment in time was how deeply I wanted to go into the, the, the photos and the videos of the actual shootings themselves. Um, I had heard from others that when I had previously played video of Gage Grosskreutz, for example, who had his arm nearly blown off, when I played video of Joseph Rosenbaum gasping out his last breaths, that the defendant looked away. He was uncomfortable uh, seeing the the. Remember how you said he had no remorse, you asshole? Fruits of his labor. And I considered uh, whether on the witness stand I would confront him with that and make him look at his victims, make him look at what he had wrought and, and, and own it. You know, you're here telling us that, that you were right, that these people deserve to die. Well, here they are. Now, so right doesn't mean happy. AI, unflinching and, and own what you did. Now, amazingly, yeah, deserve, he never... to die, deserve to die isn't quite right either. It's it, it's not that they deserve to die; it's that I deserve to live. They yeah. they compelled me to that yeah. action. He never once suggested that they deserve to die, that he gloried in it, that he was happy that they died, or anything of the sort. He said, "I I ha did what I had to do." And by the way, stop being in danger. The defense is smart in this Kim Potter trial. They'll take the same angle. They're saying, "Listen, she's she's." completely broken up that this happened but yeah. he compelled that outcome he was the catalyst that made that possible if not for his non-compliance non she never would have had to reach for any weapon much less the wrong weapon and the the crazy thing is i believe kyle i believe kyle's remorse on the subject i believe kim potter more her contemporaneous reaction to shooting him was not one that that shows some sort of like malice or some sort of glee or joy in the death of Dante Wright, even though like finding out after the fact, this guy's a bad dude and, and, you know, doesn't seem to be the worst outcome possible. Um, you know, uh, still, um, I, I don't think that, uh, I would have any trouble or the jury's going to have any trouble believing that she's remorseful. Um, no, I think her position is much more pure. And by the way, I wouldn't feel bad for, about Kyle if his I think it would be perfectly normal for him to feel like listen I wish this never had happened it was terrible it was terrible terrible for me still terrible for me this is going to plague me my entire life and at the same time feel like those motherfuckers tried to kill me and I won you can feel yeah, like both those things at the same time right you yeah. have complicated mutually cons inconsistent feelings yeah. people are strange I, I think they're consistent I just think they're they're uh, parallel really well, as you, you know, you process, I don't want to call it grief because it's not necessarily grief that he's going through, but as you process things, you go through stages, right? Like we have, we have the stages of grief and they go from denial to anger, to acceptance, uh, to remorse, to repentance. Like all of those things happen on the same spectrum of event. It's just, as you go through, you're going to be at a different place. And it's pretty interesting to think about what that, what effect that has on someone who has had a year. Uh, to process the event or a year and a half, I think, in Kyle's case. To... I mean, listen, I, I've thought about this a lot because I'm a guy who's carried a gun for personal protection my whole life. We have guns in my house to protect my family my whole life. 
And the last thing I would ever possibly want is to ever have to use any of that against anybody. And I would feel terrible if I ever had to kill anybody under those circumstances. But I also know that if I had to shoot someone, they made that happen. I ran as far as I could. I did everything I could not to have to do that. They compelled me to do that. So I simultaneously feel bad about it, that it happened. I wish it had never happened but also righteous in that, well, I had no other choice. That's what I feel when I eat an entire pot of ramen noodles. Uh, see, I feel Good bad. Commentary. That it Good commentary. Thanks well, for adding. Don't you? Don't you? And you're like, I'm going to destroy this whole pot of ramen noodles. And afterwards, you're like, I don't really feel good about All that. All the salt. It had oh to God, happen. I'm not a snail. It had to happen. Zachary. Well, if we want to talk about binge eating regret, I, I can talk about that more intelligently <laughs> than I'd really like to, to be quite honest. <laughs> Zachary B. Thanks for the, another big super chat. Thank you so much. Jason McConnell says, I have the misfortune of knowing the Lord of Aaron. He lives in Thailand for Rosenbaum reasons. Sauternus cask finish is the least of the problem. Oh, gross. Very unfortunate because the, uh, the port cask finish is very good. Um, and I'm I'm not opposed to the Aaron Malt in general, but uh, it's sad that the Lord's a scumbag. Gross. Uh, here we go. And if you can't, if you're nervous, you're scared, you're grossed out, you're you you can't confront that. I think that says something about your conscience. I think that says something about your beliefs here. I think it says more and about Binger. If you are not man enough to own up to what you did, then don't don't you dare come in here. The irony of Binger calling out anyone's masculinity is not lost on me, chat. Holy shit. What is best in life? The Star Wars <laughs> the Pelpin. What is best to in life? To crush your enemies, to see them driven before you, and hear the lamentations of the women. Wrong on civil law. It's to confront pictures of what you did a year and a half ago. <laughs> That's the what's best in life. Oh, my God. Ah! Vacu Samago says uh, there are way too many prosecutors like Binger. Their cavalier disinterested attitude towards the truth and justice are exactly the reason so many actually innocent black men are in prison right now. Uh, yeah. I mean, in, in many cases that that is true. Uh, just look at Kamala Harris and the, uh, and the, frankly, the policy of Joe Biden that he was pushing in the nineties uh, with, I think the support of Hillary Clinton, wasn't it when they, uh, when he called them jungle animals or something like that, something crazy. <laughs> yeah, sounds right. I think that's, guys, I think I that's right. Out just a minute. Yeah, no problem. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and get the next few seconds in. And tell us that these people deserve to die, and you're legally justified in doing all of this. So I can. He didn't, but that would be a terrible. Those are not the same proposition. It's a Those terrible trial strategy, too. Like to go up there and be like, "Yeah, they deserve to die," right? Like that. Notice Samuel L. Jackson didn't even... No, way he did do that. Yeah, yeah he right. did do that. Oh, Binger just learned how to prosecute from a time to kill. It was not a good trial strategy, even though it seemed to work out for Samuel Jackson somehow, <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Matthew McConaughey's genius closing, I don't really think was uh, going to save the day in reality, but, you know, it's movies, so whatever. It worked in movies. Now imagine she was white. <laughs> yeah, I no, I, I don't think, no. It works every time if you just, Kurt, no matter what it is, it's like, and that's why he had to take the cake out of the cake store without paying. Now imagine he was white. <laughs> just do that every time. It'll work. <laughs> okay. I'll give that a shot. Now imagine this padded applicate was white. Okay. That'll be, that'll be fun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I thought about playing it for him. And making him confront that reality. Uh, I ultimately decided against it, much like you just said, because we don't know. And I was concerned that I would give him an opening to look sympathetic. He would cry. He would blubber. He would, uh, you know, give some sort of sob story and it would feed into the narrative. So I, I, I decided against that. That is um, a reasonable tactical decision. So, you know, point. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> Sounds like he, he regrets it now, though, right? Like he should have, because he said, "What this is the?" We may have lost the context, but the context of the question was, "What would you have done differently?" 
So he's kind of in a roundabout way. I don't know if he's going to say that, but that's that was the context of the question. And maybe if I had, it would have made a difference. I don't know. You know, it's hard to say. Um, but I, you know, it's 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 rare to do a trial where the murderer takes the stand and says, yes, I did it, um, but I had to and I'm right. And, you know, there's never there's rarely two sides to a murder trial. What? I mean, like every time self-defense would be every time. It's not <laughs> only all of them. Only I all mean, of the self-defense. It's only it's only it's unheard of. It's unheard of in a murder trial to be two sides, except in every self-defense case ever. Yeah, I would actually suggest any any murder case that goes to trial is two sides. I this mean, true. whether this is true, this whether is it's self-defense I mean, or not. <laughs> well, I mean, except for the except for the I suppose the the rare case who person who just wants to put the state to their burden in the hope that maybe they'll screw up. But right. yeah, most of the time there's going to be two sides in most criminal cases. Ronnie O'Neill was two sides. The evidence will show. <laughs> yeah, that the state has set me up. Uh, sorry, here we go. You know, there's there's rarely a side that says, oh, yeah, that, that guy was right to kill those people. It's always I didn't kill them or, you know, I you know, I wasn't there. I have an alibi or it was someone else. You know, it's always. I mean, justification. Is he saying that he's never had a self-defense case before? I mean, that's what? It sounds like it. I mean, that's feasible, right? Or anyone in his office. He's like never heard this concept. I mean, is, is it that rare? Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. I don't know. I, it doesn't seem to me that a self-defense claim in a murder trial would be that rare, even if the claim is not correct, right? Like, yeah, as Andrew will tell you, a, a not, not inconsequential amount of time, people will throw out self-defense even though it's crap, because you know why not give that a shot? You know? Yeah, it's amazing. Did you uh, did you hear that by chance? I did, and uh, Kurt's absolutely right. Ninety-nine uh, percent of self-defense claims are utter bullshit. Uh, they're just crap that their defense lawyers throwing up good guy cases self-defense or maybe 1% of the claims. So, and by the way, that's what the courts are used to seeing. And that's what prosecutors are used to hearing. So when you show up with your claim of self-defense, they just presume it's the normal bullshit they're used to hearing. But he's acting like he's never even heard of one. He's like, there aren't, he's never heard two... of two sides in it. He's never oh, heard of two sides. One of the most common case. legal claims ever raised. <laughs> yeah, no, he, but yeah. he says, he says that he's never heard of two sides in the murder defense. He's never heard of the idea. It's usually alibi or it wasn't me or something. He's never heard of someone saying, yep, I did it and it was totally okay. This is a concept that's never it's crossed the most his common thing before. in the world because normally the person can't deny it was them. Their blood's there. They're there. The blood's on the knife. It's never heard of this concept yeah. before, Andrew. Very. By the, way, by the way, I only got to come back because I had to promise my wife a Disney vacation. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you motherfuckers better better buy LA or uh, it's California or... com slash advanced. Get a course, please. Get a course. I got. Are we going Euro Disney? Disney? Are we going big? We're going big school. Orlando, or yeah. Orlando, you're not He's even a... you're you're not even springing for the North Korean Disney. Very <laughs> very shameful. My <laughs> wife is uh, a gal who uh, I adore, but she uh, spends a large percentage of the day watching Disney YouTube videos about how to maximize your your value at Disney. And it turns out maximizing the value actually means maximizing the cost, apparently. Maxing out a credit card. Right. <laughs> That's what it does. Well, tell her, uh, tell her we love and appreciate her very much. Thank well, you. Well, I Thank I you. did. She she appreciated that, Nick. She, if you get a member of the too. Secret Speaking <laughs> Club, let us know. I want to go. Good. If she uh if she times it right, I'll I'll meet you guys down there. That'll be great. We'll go to Epcot and walk around drinking you beer. Can drink and I'll at hate Epcot. it. I'll hate every single beer I drink. Universal be Studios anyway. is better, though, just in my opinion. She, she's also she she is also a master of the Universal Studios. By the way, if if either of you are ever planning a Disney or Universal, if you don't talk to my wife, you're crazy. She's like the pro consultant on. There there are good ways and bad ways to do those trips. You don't want to do them the bad way. Trust me, you'll spend six hours standing in line. She she knows the good ways and that works. Uh, now she now she's got to drag you to Legoland for no reason at all. Mm. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Trying to dodge the actual crime. Here we had him embracing it. What know, crime? 
me. I did it. Absolutely. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so you don't have that other, that, that's that other side of it. Um, and in a, in a different trial where you've got a defendant who's not admitting they did it, who's claiming there's some, <laughs> right. Who's not claiming and justification. Yeah. Uh, I love this. Good point. What crime? Uh, because self-defense isn't, uh, is not a crime. The reason we make the state disprove self-defense beyond a reasonable doubt is because it's a negative element of the crime. If it was self-defense, it's not a crime. Right. It's right. uh it's it's specifically not criminal. Videos of a murder, it, it doesn't resonate because they're they're saying, Hey, I, I wasn't even there. So I don't right. this doesn't have any impact on me. Um so it, it was an unusual situation that I haven't really encountered before where you've got somebody who's Really, you know, up to it, um, and so I wanted him. I thought about you know making him confront all that and and, and seeing it face to face. Um, so maybe that would have made a difference. Who knows? Uh, I doubt it. So yeah, have he, you done uh, criminal defense? I know, I know Kurt does mostly IP stuff, right, Kurt? Yeah, I, I but even I've you, like but... heard of the idea of justification. Right. So anyone who's done criminal defense, I mean, if you're like one year past the bar and you you don't know anything, you're going to start getting cases like assaults and crap like that. Yeah, you're always going to raise self-defense. I mean, yep. <laughs> always. You're going to say, "Oh no, my client's not guilty because uh, all the things." Especially when you're a one-year lawyer, uh, he wasn't there. He wasn't yet born. Uh, he, it doesn't exist. <laughs> he wasn't there, but the to the extent he are, was there, it was yeah, self-defense. The witnesses are imaginary, and yeah, yeah, yeah. also it was self-defense. I mean, you know, a new lawyer, you throw, you know, you went to law school. They taught you to do this bullshit. Mutual and consistent pleading, baby. Let's go. Right. Yeah, and uh, and it, it really doesn't take long. One one domestic, it's self defense. One non domestic, it's self defense. Your, your first assault, the person will tell you why they were justified in throwing that punch. I mean, it's so great, it, you know, because it, it throws the burden onto the state, right, to disprove yeah. it beyond a reasonable doubt. I mean, normally it's it's total bullshit, so it's not hard for them to do that. But it's I, <laughs> you you'd be you, you'd be it would be malpractice not to raise the defense. I had a I had a defendant uh, domestic with the victim had a broken rib um, from a from a knee strike to the ribs or whatever. And the justification was uh, that the victim threw dog shit and instigated the fight. We won that <laughs> because because the victim was sympathetic, like they they started a fight and the fight ended poorly. It wasn't uh, it wasn't like. Um, you know, the, the assailant did like a brutal knee attack or something like that. It was like, they clashed together. Uh, there was a, there was some tussle and, and then, you know, a rib got broken, but guess what? The victim wanted to, uh, drop it. And the prosecutor, what threatened to prosecute the victim for a false police statement. And I said, try it. I'll represent the victim next. Um, but it, it was, uh, you know, you, the, the first thing justification. She started the fight, dog shit thrown at the at the at the purported assailant. That's a that's an assault. They responded to the force with force and the force ended up, you know, causing a little more harm. But I can't uh, believe for a minute anyone's been a prosecutor for any period of time and hasn't run into a literal forest of of self-defense cases. I mean, it's the yeah. most common thing you run into. Now, most of them are garbage and most of them are easy to defeat. So I can easily believe there's a prosecutor who suddenly finds himself facing a legitimate good guy claim of self-defense and has not had that experience before. I would, I would believe that absolutely. Uh, but self-defense generally, no. That's... Yeah, it's, it's insane. Okay, here we go. Prosecution, you have to balance that. You don't want to appear, you know, mean or insensitive that you're, you know, pushing the, you know, the most, salacious parts of of what happened and and obviously if you're putting in front of the hand you're putting in front of the jury and you yeah. might appear it might you're, make you you're, appear you're exploiting the victims you're, you're oh all, my god the prosecutors at risk there's, there's those factors <laughs> as well and and you know I'm, i don't want to look bad exploiting the dead people for my Jesus prosecution Christ. right Isn't the, the 18 year old who might spend the rest of his life in prison ever, i mean that's aren't you kind of exploiting the victims in all the prosecutions that's the whole the, that's the whole point of like them here, being here victims. are the victims jury uh i want you to fix this yes that's Please. that's how justice works let me show you the harm that the victim endured and the state is the only way we can reasonably cure this harm and prevent it from happening to the next person that's because if if you're just trying to repair harm 
uh, in general, you would do it civilly, but you're you're saying even law person... and order gets this right. I mean, you know, <laughs> these are the dead. We speak for the dead <laughs> who cannot uh, speak for themselves. Zachary B with another donation. Thank you, buddy. Very much appreciated. Eddie Oliver says, hey, Bronco, I'll go sign up for your self-defense thingy. But you got to promise not to let your wife take you on that two day Star Wars hotel experience that costs six grand. Uh, Believe also- it or not, we talked about that yesterday. Yeah, we're not doing that. Good. Don't it's it looks really bad. Like uh I think my parents are doing it. I'll report back on how they liked it. Cause they're not they're not like into the culture stuff. So it'll be a pretty neutral report. So I'll let people With my know. wife, she she mostly knows I don't like standing in line. So she looks yeah. for ways to spend money so I don't have to stand in line. So there's fast pass, super have you fast done the pass, guided Trump thing? level fast pass, whatever. I I don't know how it all works, but You got to do the guided tour. That thing's actually great. That is what she's actually talking about. And that is fucking expensive. It's very expensive. Right. Which is why I need everyone here to sign up for my class. (laughs) (laughs) Saturday, January 8th, lawselfdefense.com slash advanced, a law school seminar. Quality course. (laughs) CLE. I I will tell you as someone who did it on someone else's pocketbook, not mine, uh, it's 100% worth it. And uh, we, we brought five kids, you know, and getting, getting through the lines at Disney and getting kind of the guided tour to different, uh, different attractions at different parks very quickly and getting kind of the backstage way to go is, is fantastic. I would, uh, I would strongly recommend it if you have the opportunity. Right. So I'm, I'm, I had permission to come back here tonight because I promised her that. So help me out (laughs) folks. Uh, also, are you going to cover the Garrett Foster shooting? Which one is that? Is that the one where he was the the, he was confronted by the Antifa guy in Texas and I think so. I think so. Yeah, I'll cover that one for sure. Uh, There we go. Here we go. Uh, I'm dealing with victims who have families. You know, they're there, um, and I I've got an obligation to them as well. Real quick, I don't think the families are too concerned with you exploiting the death that they're trying to get justice for. I mean, I think that they would. If you if you think of the family as actually seeking some sort of uh, retributive justice for what happened to their loved one, they're okay with you, quote unquote, exploiting the victim so long as justice is served. The only time that exploiting the victim runs hollow is when you can't win, in my opinion. Um, so I, I, I was concerned about that, too. That's an absolutely uh, an excellent point, Dave. Have, have you have you point, Dave. Talked to the families uh, at all since? I have not. Um, we uh, you talked to Kyle's family. <laughs> yeah. Since right. I apology didn't... letter. Hey, uh... I mean, if you're the prosecutor, you're not supposed to be going for a win. You're supposed to be going for justice. Justice was served. We have a jury verdict. Have you talked to Kyle's family? Yeah. Say, about how they feel about how things worked out. Say, I'm, I'm very glad that justice was served in this instance. Uh, you know, we, we, we thought that there might be a, a reasonable you know, that we thought that you may have been guilty of a crime and I'm Turns glad we had, a, we had a, gl- we had a jury discern that you were not. And, uh, and so, you know, so I hope you. you're all doing well. Can I bring yeah. you a, a cake for Christmas? Can I, a snack tray, a charcuterie yeah. board or anything, maybe a Gatorade board. Yeah. Oh, that'd be good. Oh, that would be good. I would send one to curtain me too. <laughs> and she's like, I would destroy a charcuterie board oh, right I now. Love those things. <laughs> A couple of the families were largely participating by, um, uh, by essentially by Zoom or you know remotely. Um, we had uh, Mr. Huber's uh, closest, um, the person in his family that he was closest to was his great aunt who testified, and um, I didn't get a chance to talk <laughs> in to limited her. form. <laughs> uh, and I know other folks in our office. You decided yeah. to cut off her testimony then, when you were going to have to admit that he was holding a knife to his brother's stomach and threatening to burn the whole house down with everyone inside. <laughs> what a, that's what Holy cut pills. off first testimony. Yeah. Uh, once, once he realized, yeah, she was going to talk about how he was a good boy and the defense had some really good counter examples. That, that was my favorite part of the trial. Probably <laughs> when, when Krauss was play, placed in that dilemma, he was like, uh, I could show him as a hero or, but then I'd have to show him as a knife wielding maniac arsonist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll pass. You almost wish they wouldn't have 
Uh, it was like he was faced with a, like a cheeseburger. I wish the defense had the most delicious cheeseburger in the world, but it had arsenic on it. He's like, we, oh, I really want to eat that cheeseburger, but I know it'll kill me. <laughs> I can't do it. We've never really talked about the risk, though, of the defense not objecting to that. Because we did talk about the the mistake, like the event, the defense objected, and and then they explained what their objection would lead to, and the prosecution withdrew. But had the defense not objected, they would have had to petition the court uh, for permission to go into that, saying that the door was open, and there was a possibility that Schrader would say, "No, you can't actually go into that. I don't think it has been sufficiently raised." I mean, I think they could have gotten there, but I mean, you could have just let him let her go like three questions deep into the my boy, baby didn't do nothing wrong and then make the motion. So you didn't have that problem. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, am, or am I missing something? No, you're not. You're not missing anything. I think the only thing is the the risk of Schrader just not agreeing with them. Yes, I think it was a risk. Right. The door was very yeah. much open by the testimony. Yeah, the first couple I, of questions are going to be softball. They're not going to lead to like revelatory answers. You know, the first couple right. of questions on the character are going to be real kind of leading into, you know, just general stuff before we get to whatever the good stuff is later. So you can you can probably safely let him and let her answer, you know, three four questions that are kind of character esque. And if, then be like, okay, now we want to make the, the motion. Judge, if you trust the judge, if if you if you're uncertain about the judge, you can't do that, because the judge might say, well, we lost, you know, you let the first few questions in, and now it's on the table, and I'm going to let them finish their narrative of this particular event, and uh, you can always, uh, you know, counter it on cross, and and then it's all in there. Well, as and long as I can bring him, as long as I can bring him my character, that's my entire decisions point. Decisions where. He was like, well, well, we'll just see how it develops. We'll just see how well, this is a fair go. point. We'll just... Andrew, Andrew is correct with this judge. With this judge, you are 100% correct, Andrew, and I'm 100% wrong. With this judge, you're correct because this judge doesn't ever make decisions. So I, I stand absolutely corrected. You're right. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying you're, you're technically wrong. You're technically No, I'm definitely correct. wrong on this occasion because I failed to remember that this is Judge Schroeder. I, that somehow escaped my analysis of somewhere in that chain so don't get that brazen was, with me that was my mistake my bad let's press on <laughs> uh, uh i, I would feel bad if people thought i was trying to one up kurt that's not at all what i'm trying to do it's just my no, own i mean i still things. disagree with you about the call shooting i can argue with that with you some more about that one but you, no, when you're right you're right well bring I mean, it motherfucker come on yeah i'm just saying <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying, man. I agree with the panel when I agree with the panel, and I disagree with the no. panel when I disagree with the panel. Of course, Listen, I, I that's just why we're a, lawyers. I just got a text from Andrew's wife, and she said, "Delay the Kyle argument for another stream so I can get a second Disney vacation." That's what she said. That probably so. was her, <laughs> you motherfucker. I bet that was her. Where's my phone? <laughs> uh, Gummy says, "Stop mispronouncing charcuterie board now. Stop it." Uh, okay. There we go. Uh, all right, back to this. I have to say, I am on borrowed time, guys. <laughs> Honestly, yep. we're 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 going we're, any time you have to go. It's it's literally fine. Um, but we'll no. We'll she she doesn't want me to leave early. She wants me to leave with the Disney vacation. So, <laughs> lawselfdefense.com slash advanced. Sign up for the class, folks. Well, the communication since then, but not me personally. You made another strategic decision during the trial. You characterized Rittenhouse as uh, what you called an active shooter. Um, and, and you used that term, active shooter. Um, what was the thought process that went into using that? And and I, I the question was I had is, thought process? I, I was desperately trying bad. to win. <laughs> By using that term, did you perhaps set the bar too high that now you had to show like meet the, the FBI definition of what an active shooter was like <laughs> the only actual definition home homeland security everyone has the same definition of an active shooter and what he did does not meet that definition did you did you set the bar too high by suggesting that he was an active shooter and yet he wasn't actively shooting at all the entire night he's Even running after. down the whole length of that street shooting nobody until they knock him to the ground. It was an active shooter when maybe that wasn't necessary. And you know, Dave, I think I probably you know didn't what, communicate Dave? that notion very well because um, no, you, you didn't. You've characterized what I said in in a way that others have too, and and I, it, it's clearly that I didn't I didn't make this distinction very very well at the trial because 
I wasn't actually trying to say myself that he was an active shooter. But oh. what I was trying to say is that from the crowd's perspective, oh, that's God. how they, they viewed him. Um, <laughs> and that was a reason. You could have just gotten the crowd, someone in the crowd, anybody in the crowd to say that. And yet you didn't, you didn't manage to. You didn't not manage one to. witness not testified. Even not even Gage. I thought he was an active, sh not even Gage Gross Gross <laughs> testified. I thought he was an active shooter. Look, I, I wasn't saying it for me. I was saying it for everybody else. And it, it's like, no, no one said that. Could All you the other lapel pins. A single person in Kenosha who thought that, a single one of those uh, people on the other side of Kyle, you, you couldn't, you couldn't get him in there. Why couldn't you get him in there? They were all scared because they were all, you know, arsonists and rioters, I think is, is part of the problem, but you couldn't get BG on the scene to testify about the active shooter. You couldn't get anybody to do it. Uh, Jason McConnell says Jar Jar Binks was just a guy fishing for a discount at Disney. Guide yourself accordingly, Chubranca. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, assumption on their part at that particular moment. Um, I don't necessarily uh, believe that he was going to go and, and mow down, you know, 25 people or anything well, like that's that. That's what an active shooter is. Didn't you actually make that on closing argument? He has 30. Well, he did ask the question, you have 30 bullets. Doesn't that mean you could kill 30 people? He has something along those lines to Kyle. Yeah. You could kill at least 30 people, which incidentally, no, not necessarily, he, but. He said that same line at close. He had 30 bullets. He had the potential to kill up to th at least 30 people. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that was a line on close also. I agree. He did. He did ask Kyle that question. I think he said, because Kyle said, well, yeah, I, I guess. Basically, like if you have 30 bullets, couldn't you shoot 30 people? And it's like <laughs> Kyle should yeah. have said, Well, if I were a psychopathic binger, yeah. well, I don't know about you, but I could shoot 50. I'm doing a lot of through and through, baby. <laughs> yes, yes. I'll line them up right and I'll get a whole lot higher score. Uh Eddie I'll, just like in college. Said, Duty. Well, ammo's expensive. I'm not shooting if I don't have to. <laughs> Stand back to back so I can get a two for. I but yeah, I budget my shots. I, I get at least three for the price of two. Uh, Eddie Oliver says, Hey, Bronca, I signed up and I got two state DVDs. Now tell your wife, Eddie said to get off your back. <laughs> and yes, the foster <laughs> shooting was the one in the BLM riots in Austin. I don't and know if here. you're married, Eddie, but they never, ever. Is that going to trial? That, uh, is that going to trial in Austin? If so, I, I could attend that in person or something. I have no idea if are you near there, Kurt? I, I'm, I'm in, I'm in Austin. Yeah. Yeah, man. If the trial's actually in Austin, I'm, maybe I'll ride down and and uh, do it in person. Sweet. He's uh, yeah, Kurt's that place in Austin where there's live music playing outside sometimes. So uh, he says it was weird because the protest dried up after it. Yeah, it's it's well strange. that'll happen, right? When people yeah. figure out, hey, if we, we try to smash up your car, we you might shoot us dead. It's amazing. It's amazing how that works. But what I was trying to say is that after um, learning that he just shot someone, uh, seeing him running through a crowded area with a gun, that it would have with been a gun. for the jury to, or sorry, for the crowd to view him as an active shooter. And under those circumstances. But why didn't you just get someone from the crowd then to say it? Circumstances, you know, we have in Wisconsin, we now have the ability for individuals to apply for a permit to carry a concealed weapon. Uh, now? I have it's myself. Uh, I'm a gun owner. Wisconsin and, was relatively uh, late to the party, weren't they? They might have been the last. Were they the last state to get a permit? They might have been the last. But even then, it must be ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Wisconsin not, not was the last in history. Last <laughs> well, I have one myself. I'm a gun owner. I love guns. You can tell by how I conducted the trial. We are allowed to carry concealed weapons in public, and one of the rationales behind that is we are allowed is the most frustrating phrase attached to a fundamental right that exists <laughs> don't, don't even get me started <laughs> uh, if there's an active shooter if i go to the grocery store and somebody pulls out a gun and starts mowing people down well then i've got my gun and i can try and stop them uh and i'm i'm using i generally there i don't could gate of, of course we wouldn't expect you to do it binger 
Could could Gage or Zeminski try with their illegally <laughs> carried firearms? How about that question? By the way, where I live in Colorado, every day I go to the grocery store, there's there are people open carrying firearms and nice. I don't even blink at it. Yeah. Cause they're they're holstered on their uh of hip course. or whatever. They're just yeah. shopping for food like me. Right. I mean, I have a gun too, by the way. <laughs> it's just I don't open carry. I I shop for food by shooting it dead. Uh, I only eat Floridians. Here we go. I have any intent of doing that myself, but a lot of people out there think that that's what they would do in that circumstance. And the larger question that I have is, you know, when the police arrive and they see two people with guns who are both oh, shooting no, at not this, another, not this tired how are they supposed point. to know? How are they supposed to know who's right and who's wrong? Oh my God. Are they to know that one person's got the right to self-defense? Well, that, that actually okay. is a real issue. But so what's the alternative? Right. The thing yeah, is, it's like, okay, let, let, let's just walk through this. All right, so the police come to a self defense shooting uh, and the shooting, and there's two people with guns, one of whom is, might be the good guy in this scenario who is shooting the bad guys back, and the police might make a mistake. Okay, here's the alternative scenario the good guy doesn't have a gun at all, the bad, the bad guy, guy just mows everyone down, right? And then the body, and then the police, and then the police take notes, which they're so good at, right? After the fact, so. First of all, the police might make a mistake, although it's somewhat unlikely because when the police show up, you're probably going to, if you have half a sense, you know, probably try to make that apparent. But even if they do make a mistake, your only alternative was being completely at the mercy of the bad guys. So, right. I mean, roll the, the dice, baby. Police shoot police with some regularity in America, especially yeah. plainclothes police all rushing to some active shooter situation. It happens all the time, but the only alternative is that you be helpless against the active shooter who's mowing people down in the mall. Sorry, that's not an acceptable fallback position for me. Yeah, the the legal advice is is do the self defense shoot before the police arrive and explain it after and put your gun out of the way. Yeah, yes, that would be very helpful. Yes, right. Yeah, kill I mean, the bad guy, get the gun out of the way, and just hold your hands up. Everything's cool. No one's going to shoot you then. Again, the the likelihood of the police arriving during a self defense shooting is it's like lightning striking the same place three right, times. Yeah. You have the, the national gun average because for a party they're not going to show up. Isn't yeah, the they, national average for a party one call something like eight minutes? Yeah, it, it's like there's there's no way they're going to get there. Um, I'll tell you one thing: for seconds certain, count, baby. No one ever tries to shoot you in the face while you're standing next to a police officer. That doesn't happen. Yeah, so there's some distance away. <laughs> They're not next to you. Uh, Ron Tarver, thank you for the donation. It was retracted probably by YouTube, but thank you anyway. And getting it back to this case here, you know, Rittenhouse wants us to believe that he had to defend himself against Joseph Rosenbaum. Well, that's in its own little category, and that's an event that's happened. And we don't have a judge and jury there to make that decision at that particular moment in time. All they know, all the crowd knows is he just shot someone and now he's running with his gun. And That's actually all right. not all the crowd knows. I mean, it could be in, in different instances, but that's not all the crowd knows in this instance. Either. And it doesn't so, matter. Yeah, that, that too. Because but, it, has, it has absolutely no impact on Kyle's privilege of self-defense. Correct. It's it's his, as we stated several times during the trial. It's his state of mind that matters, right. not any bystander, observer, or even victim. It might excuse their behavior, but it does not uh, negate his privilege to defend himself. Yep. And it's reasonable for them to assume at that point that this is someone who may be running to his next victim. We simply don't know. And if you have an AR-15. You don't run to your next victim like that. First of all, that's not an active shooter. That's a different sort of scenario. If, if Kyle's like, Oh, I'm going to ice Rosenbaum. And then I have a kill list of people and I'm going to go run to my next victim. That's not an active shooter. That's not someone who is actively shooting. That is someone who is hunting down a particular preconceived target. And they're different. And those differences matter mass shooting differences matter school shootings are not the same as church shootings church shootings are not the same as las vegas shooting uh they're not the same as the pulse nightclub shooting they have different motivations they have different mo's they have different uh target selection they have and all they're all of wildly different than kyle's case which was he only shot people who were attacking him um, how much longer of this thing do we have by the way uh 14 minutes 
Okay, yeah, I'm not going to make it. I have to go to bed, guys. I have a long day tomorrow. That's fine. I will soldier on and finish. When you guys have to leave, that is okay. Because I I knew this is a Monday. This is a Monday. This is out there. I have have real work to do. Yeah, buddy. Well, I appreciate you you showing up. Thanks, man. Bye. Bye. Uh, Guys, make sure you check out Uncivil Law. Uh, He does great breakdowns. uh, Specifically, if you want to know about... uh, A lot of people ask me, am I covering the Capitol riot stuff and, and the prosecutions of them i i really have not there's so many how do you pick well kurt picked all of them so you can you can check that out and he also covers hilarious cases like uh women shooting themselves in labia with a with a gun um which is a terrible plan don't do that don't do that ladies ron traver says a uh, pro tip don't drink in super chat <laughs> correct uh, that's why YouTube yeeted your chat. Apparently Kyle surface says allow does Binger's wife allow him to watch her sleep with her boyfriends. Damn. Very, very vicious. Savage chat tonight. Thank you. And in my mind, if someone in that crowd had a gun and had killed, you know, shot and killed Kyle Rittenhouse, our office would not have prosecuted. Well, somebody our did office- have a gun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess that explains why he's not prosecuting gauge, right? Because someone tried to shoot Kyle Rittenhouse and he said he's not going to prosecute them. So I guess it, it's at least consistent. It's at least consistent. It's funny now that since Kyle's not guilty and that was a self-defense justification, you would think maybe he would reassess the person who did have a gun, the two people who did have a gun. But I if he not. wasn't politically motivated. <laughs> right. If it was all about justice found that person criminally liable. Now, would there have been civil liability? I'm not an expert, I don't know. But would I say that that's uh, justified self-defense for someone in that crowd to stop an active shooter? Yes. But that's not actually justified self-defense automatically because there's an active shooter. It's not the question. There's only one person who's the defendant. It doesn't matter what the other people thought. It only matters what the defenders, the defendant's reasonable perceptions were. And, and again, the, the question in an active shooter situation is, is the person that you're shooting at the time, do you reasonably believe that that person is Im- imminently going to cause serious death or bodily injury or death or serious bodily injury to yourself or another? If, if there had been people in the crowd shooting AR-15 rifles back at Kyle, they might have been completely justified. Right. But that has nothing to do with whether or not Kyle was justified himself in defending himself against attacks. And we, those are we, two different analyses. We could go down a crazy train, right? Where someone in the crowd is shooting an AR 15 at Kyle, someone else. In Everybody the crowd, could be justified. Right. Perceives that the person shooting back at Kyle was an active shooter. Like, oh my God, this person's firing into the crowd because they don't know. And then they turn and plug that guy. We have a whole chain of murder justifications going down the street. And and, and that, that, that that's actually legal. That's appropriate. Yes. What, what, but what Binger is trying to suggest here is, is that if somebody else would have been justified in using force against Rittenhouse, that means he's not justified in using force to defend himself. That's not how it works. You don't lose... Your, your, your privilege of self-defense because someone else has a reasonable belief they can use force against you. You could both be right, but yep. their belief that they're right doesn't make you wrong. Whether and, or not you are right or wrong is independent of what they think. It de- depends on your reasonable perceptions. And amazingly, that is the same topic that you and I discussed on the first time you were on the show, talking about the McMichaels and Arbery, that there's a possibility that each party in that right. case reasonably believed there was self-defense uh and uh, you know the the case ended up turning up uh turning on the question of citizens arrest and some really bad testimony from the uh from the mcmichaels but um the the principle remains true if both parties believe there's self-defense and both parties are reasonable then both parties are justified right uh and by the way folks it happens all the time yeah uh, I'm Storm and Mormon says for the Binger Self-Defense Education Fund. Oh, thank you. I would say so. Now here, this crowd didn't take lethal action against him. They actually used oh, no? characterize as probably. I mean, I, I a thought. more to the head? <laughs> a a gun to the head? Uh, a a stomp, stomp to the head? I guess, I guess Binger's never been stomped. Except when he asked for it. 
to the least intrusive means possible. I mean, they try and hit him with a skateboard. They you know, try and knock him to the ground and kick him in the face when they. <laughs> Binger, you motherfucker. Ask anybody who's been knocked to the ground and hit in the face if they feel like that was the least, the least. He's like doing a least restrictive means test here, a least restrictive way they could stop him. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? There was. There's really, that was the less, the least they could do is knock me to the ground and kick me in the fucking mouth. You know, you know, what was glaringly missing from the cross examination of uh, Kyle Rittenhouse by Binger is Binger never handed him a skateboard and said, hit me in the fucking head with this twice. And by the way, after you do that, stop me in the face <laughs> and then point a Glock 17 in my head. Uh, someone, uh, K. Shallow Williams says, Andrew's book to Binger's office. Please do it. Uh, oh, I am. I'm actually sending all of, I'm going to either uh, send or personally deliver. I haven't decided an entire, an entire shipment, one for every prosecutor in the Kenosha County office, uh, a copy of uh, Andrew's book, law of self-defense. That is, that is definitely happening. Um, and it will be, <laughs> that would, it will be, man, I should fly up there and just hand him a box. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so funny. We should talk. Let's talk offline. Maybe I'll do that. We'll figure it out. That'll be fun. I'll, I'll, I got it. Hey, listen, I can I can wear my. Uh... <laughs> well, I'll show my law of self defense ball cap and uh, just deliver them a box of uh, hard copies. That would be you awesome. you fly in. Uh, I'll meet you there, and we'll carpool over with the box. <laughs> that that's a deal, brother. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great webcam. Shirley S, thank you for the donation. Uh, here we go could be doing far worse to him. Um, but my argument on that point was, who's, it really comes down to who's got the right to self-defense in that situation. Oh, Kyle Rittenhouse, yeah. maybe. <laughs> maybe everybody. Just maybe, maybe we all do. It, it, again, who's got the right to self-defense? The question is not who's got the right to self-defense. It's you're fundamentally misunderstanding the legal issue. Does Kyle Rittenhouse have the right to self-defense and everybody else's right to self-defense is irrelevant to that question. And it always has been, and it always should be. I don't know if it always will be, but it always should be. If I have the right to self-defense, someone else's right to self-defense is irrelevant to that fact, period. And, and that's the way it goes. Cause you can't do it any other way. Kyle can't be sitting there going, oh, I got to have a legal analysis. If if Anthony Huber feels justified in hitting me with a skateboard, then I guess I have to die on the ground. Nope, that's not how it works. Uh, JB Weld says, Binger's a self-serving lackey dunce, but I think the real issue is out of control media. Without the insane media mob, the circus would have never happened. Maybe. It's Maybe. true, but a different question. End of this entire encounter, you've got the defendant on the ground and you've got Gage Grosskreutz standing over him with a Glock pistol in his hand. The defendant wow. has an AR-15 and they're two feet apart. Now, is it possible? Two feet away, do you take an AR or a Glock? I'm firing that shot every day of the week and twice on Sundays. But if you had the choice between the two... Oh, weapons. the AR every day. <laughs> Are you kidding me? A Glock is impotent compared to an AR. <laughs> AR is the first time I fired uh, when I bought one uh, after Newtown. <laughs> uh, and I thought they were going to go away, so I bought one immediately. Um, the first time I ever fire, you fire it, you're like, oh, my God. This is the most accurate and wonderful thing. Easy to shoot. Yeah. So you just point I, it. I, and I, you I put have... that little iron sight dot down there, and you just – and it, the bullet goes right to where you were pointing. So I know I know that you have 15 kids, but I, I only have four. And uh, but every time I my kids, uh, my my just modestly four kids uh, reach 12 years of age, I take them to the range. They at 12 years they shoot that AR. They can hit headshots at 100 yards all day long. Now I do have a red dot on mine, but <laughs> that's a hundred buck option. I mean, it's just a, a magnificent platform for self-defense that anybody yep. can use even children can use women men it doesn't matter it's an effective self-defense arm that's not expensive really inexpensive if you build it yourself which i recommend you learn how to do um and the 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 crazy thing is the platform because of the the springs inside because of the gas discharge uh because of the 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 weight and size of the platform itself the recoil is there's no I mean, recoil it's it's nothing you can hold it 
like Arnold as a joke, you can hold it out one armed and fire that thing. Yep. And the only limit is how tired your shoulder gets from holding about a six pound uh, item out at extension, but you can do it all day. And it's, it's the coolest thing in the world. Uh, how, just how effective that thing is. It's, it's the perfect home defense platform. Yep. I would much rather use that than a shotgun or, or some like large, you know, uh, a handgun where you yep. might, um, you might, you pull the trigger too hard and it'll twist your, you know, when you're stressed out, it'll twist the, the, the barrel of the handgun off a little bit. You're not going to have that problem with an AR cause you've got a stabilizing hand. It's, it's amazing. Um, no, no comparison. There's no comparison between a pistol and AR and a shotgun for, for home defense. I mean, you can't really carry an AR around you when you go to the supermarket normally. So then you just have a pistol, but when you're home, you have the option of a AR shotgun or pistol pick the ar every single time someone says show us your six pound ar nick look i don't know if it's six pounds okay whatever the poundage is of an ar-15 i have a six i have a sig 516 patrolman if you want to know uh exactly what yeah. you can look up the the weight on it it's a fantastic gun it's a good uh, that's a good long gun yeah uh eddie oliver says i sound like a broken record about this shooting but foster pointed his gun at perry Perry shot Foster. Then the guy standing next to Foster shot back at Perry. At first, no one was arrested until the Tards and Austin cried. Uh, so there you go. I I'm a not lot familiar. Of, a with lot it. of assumption of fact. I need to see the actual facts and evidence. But yeah, I, I, I'm I, favorably disposed to the guy charged. I have I have no idea. I haven't I haven't seen it at all, other than a couple super chats about it. So okay, here we go. That both of those people at that exact moment in time have an equal right to self-defense. I don't be. think so. I don't think there is a, a situation. I think in any situation, someone's- Well, you're an idiot, so- Yeah, you're you're completely wrong because again, it's not about the objective truth of the situation. It's about the reasonable beliefs of the parties involved. People can reasonably believe two disparate things. That's okay because they have limited information right. and they have fear. And that's, that's all you need. Limited information and fear is sufficient for self-defense because we don't want people to have to choose to die like that. It's amazing how that works. Very, very common for two cops to show up at an active shooter event. The cops are in plain clothes. They're looking for a guy in plain clothes with a gun. They see each other. They shoot at each other. And one of them kills the other. Happens all the time. They were both legally justified in using force. But one of them died, and that person died terribly, but lawfully. Uh, hold on, I gotta, I gotta check this out. Sig five sixteen patrolman weight, uh, three point four five kilograms, so uh, uh, seven point six pounds. Okay, yeah, that's seven point six. Right. I said six. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the chat. It was 7.6. By the way, Nick, you wouldn't want it lighter than that. It gets <laughs> it gets unpleasant lighter than that. Yeah. No, it's, was, that's the perfect weight. That's what I you was want. just guessing because I have no one because I haven't put it on right. my look. I keep the scale in the center console of my car like Dante Wright. I didn't have time to go get the scale out of my car. Uh so I for when you buy the out. arugula at Whole Foods, <laughs> you know, exactly. just like double check the those store yeah. scales, you know, those lying motherfuckers. Just... Your honor, my client is right. just out Who's buying playing arugula, arugula, and fresh herbs like basil, rosemary, thyme. It says one ounce, but who knows? <laughs> you just wanted to make you, when, sure. when you're making a basil salad, you need the <laughs> right amount of basil. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you're going to dry it and burn it and smoke it. <laughs> I did a chiffonada basil yesterday and a pasta I made. It was delicious. Uh, here we go. And so who's got the greater right there? Kyle Rittenhouse, who's just killed two <laughs> this the is winner. The, the great the greater <laughs> right. Greater rights is a property rights proposition. It is not a self-defense proposition. You have an, you have an absolute right to self-defense regardless of anybody else's competing right. There is no competing right. You either have the right to self-defense or you don't in that. And situation. the other guy might also have an absolute right to self-defense. Yes. And, and, and those the winner two, wins. Those two do not conflict with each other in right. a competition of rights. By the way, it's if only... you worried about that scenario, 
practice with your gun. Make sure you're the winner because the winner wins. Yeah, the the draw speed, the draw speed, the accuracy, and the trigger pull win on that one. Uh, here we go. And shot at a third, and this has all happened right in front of Gage Grosskreutz, or Gage Grosskreutz, who's done nothing wrong at that point. Nothing Except wrong. for being illegal in, illegally concealing a firearm. Illegally concealing a firearm, walking up to... He actually doesn't know if Gage Grosskreutz had the privilege of self-defense, if he reasonably believed it. We haven't tested that claim. No. Uh, Gage, Gage was either legally justified in walking up to what he thought was an active shooter right. and attempting or a to murderous defend, aggressor right to, attempting to defend himself or others but i have a hard time believing that actually because gage crossquit said that he was afraid for kyle right when huber and he ran attacked to kyle him. when kyle was not engaging anybody with Correct. lethal force not engaging him not engaging Huber, the threat was over, and he believed that Kyle was in at risk of serious head trauma from Anthony Huber. So <laughs> he he did in his mind a self defense assessment and says that guy is justified. He fires a shot. Oh, I better attack him for his justified action. Doesn't add up. We didn't test we didn't test Grosskreutz, but the information that we have says he was not justified. So pro tip, movie. kids, you don't become a better witness for the prosecution by being a weed head. <laughs> <laughs> true. Very true. Here we go. Nothing against <laughs> weed. Uh, uh, whatever. Yeah, you, you live in the weed heaven. Oh, the my original. God. It's amazing here. It's, it was so funny. We were talking. What was the other case we we're talking about today? But anyway, here, here in yeah. Colorado, it's routine. You, you, like, stop at a traffic light and the car in front of you has like the window half rolled down and suddenly a huge cloud of white smoke comes out of it. I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure that's vaping. Maybe it's vaping. It well, doesn't smell like vaping. It smells it, like yeah. <laughs> if it's vaping, it's still weed. <laughs> like, just Lord. Just just vape weed any vape weed every day. Uh, <laughs> here we go. The way our jury instructions are awarded, we we're not allowed to look at it as clearly from the perspective of the victim. Um, but what I tried to argue is because you never are not any state is it's allowed to do that. Argue is Gage Grosskreutz and the rest of that crowd have a greater right to self-defense than the defendant. And so if they, why would that be? It, it, it makes no sense. None of them, none of them are actually threatened by Kyle Rittenhouse. And again, so l walking through the scenario, let's say, let's say Kyle does murder Joseph Rosenbaum and then runs to the police. Do you have a right to then shoot Kyle Rittenhouse as he's running away? No, you do not. These you are the same people who would be saying that Joseph Rosenbaum, just because he raped children, you can't shoot him. That's not an execution offense. You know, you, you just have to turn him over to the law. These same people are saying the guy who defended himself against Joseph Rosenbaum, well, you can murder him in the street. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh the this this idea. Yeah. If if Kyle shoots Joseph Rosenbaum in cold blood and says, Ha ha, I didn't even know about your pedophilia, and I'm you happy to can't that beat him dead. to death in the street. No, and you can't shoot him as he's running away. He would have to he he doesn't brandish the firearm at anybody else. He keeps it at a low ready the entire time and he runs towards the police. At that point, I'm sorry, you're stuck until he turns around and points that gun at you or someone else around you. Then, uh, then you you're justified if he does something like that. But Kyle didn't do that. Shooter, if they have no definitive answer on who was right or who was wrong in that first shooting, I think they've got the right to take steps to disarm, to neutralize, and perhaps even to kill someone that they perceive to be an active shooter. Remember they better that this, win. <laughs> remember that this motherfucker opened this interview saying he does not believe in vigilante justice. Right. Yet he just advocated for pure vigilanteism. That that just because they have determined someone they to decide be, they were not a threat. Right? They were yeah. not defending themselves. They thought it would be appropriate for them to enforce the law the way they thought it should be enforced. That Absolutely. is vigilantism. 
Eddie Oliver says, let's start a GoFundMe to buy out cases of Bronca self-defense books and mail several of them to Binger every day. Then Listen, Binger could go to then Bronca could go to Disneyland in California too. <laughs> you have to stop buying the books, guys. I have to be honest with you. We, we are we are ordering tens of thousands of copies of books, but they're not going to show up for like a couple weeks. Don't order the book. Take the class. Please, God, I beg you, <laughs> please. My wife is going to, if I wake up in the morning and we made 200 bucks tonight, my wife is going to kill me for staying What's, up this uh, late. Uh, can you, can you buy the class for other people? Is there like you a can, gift? can actually a gift option. Um, Nick, it's, I'm so glad you asked. You can buy the class for other people. Just sign up for yourself. Send us an email at support at a lot of self and we'll switch it over to Satan. Whoever you want can take the class It'll be totally cool. Law of self defense.com slash advanced. But man, uh, if, if I go back to bed, if I wake up in the morning and we sold 200 bucks and nothing, my wife is going to kill me. <laughs> uh, that's, that's like one soda at Disneyland, just for folks who haven't been there. Another question that came in How much um, CLE? I know you, you're not accredited for CLE, but you offer the. If someone takes a course, you offer the paperwork to basically get accreditation. Right. Well, for lawyers, we'll provide a syllabus. It's eight hours of instruction. So you ought Ooh. to get eight hours of CLE, but it depends on your local, whatever your authority does. So if you're a lawyer out there, you want eight good hours instead of eight droning, bullshit. monotonous, right. horrendous hours of CLE. Uh, this is a way to get it. This is By the way, we have like a thousand reviews from lawyers. It's the best CLE they've ever taken because it's not bullshit. It's yeah. actually fun. Even even if you're like a real estate lawyer, you'll never use it. You'll love it. I trust me. Uh, here we go. Maybe I should buy Binger. Uh, one oh my those. god, that would be so awesome. You mm. should, Nick. Mm. I think. Uh, okay, I, I'm going to leave it to a poll. Let's see. How much does this course cost? I think the shit. Uh, I, Roughly. Think, I think it's 150 bucks for the like the bottom. <laughs> I'm so good at marketing the bottom level, <laughs> the garbage level with the, the garbage people. The professional level is 150, but the super professional, there's higher levels. But here we go. Who should I buy a class for? Inger? Prowse, <laughs> Supreme Court Justice Gorsuch, both. Uh, there we go, chat. You guys, the fate, the fate of this is in your hands. Uh, who should I buy the class for? Binger, Kraus, or both? It's up to you, chat. You'll have to, you'll have to figure that one out. Okay, back to the, back to the audio, so we can get done at some point. And so that's the 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 line of argument that I was trying to make to the jury. Um, and I, I think this is a situation that we we have seen before, uh, you know, from Columbine to Sandy Hook to the Aurora, you know, movie theater. All com all the actual all, active shooter events, <laughs> which this was not. And each of those active shooter events distinctly different from the other. Columbine, high school kids go in and shoot up their own high school classmates. Newtown or Sandy Hook, which is Newtown, uh, is graduated student goes and shoots up elementary school aurora guy goes to movie theater and starts shooting audience with shotgun three complete uh, three mash they all that went to the fight to kill innocent people that's that's, that's not what happened with god written house he didn't right. shoot anybody until he was attacked and and but even ignoring kyle rittenhouse each of those shootings distinctly different different motives different MOs, different everything about those things. And and to, to lump them together is just disingenuous. I hate it. I hate it because we can't stop mass shootings if we treat them all the same. They're not the same. They don't, the people don't have the same motivations. They don't have the same targets and they don't have the same uh, justifications in their crazy minds. Um, there was in a situation a few years ago, I think it was in Denver somewhere where a police officer showed up to an active shooting and Inadvertently, oh my God, it was Castle Rock. Who was innocently trying to use his gun to stop the active shooter. It was that mm -hmm. situation I described earlier with the grocery store? They they killed the wrong guy. Um, you know, you, you don't know in an active shooter situation. And you know, a couple of the officers in the trial tested. Sounds like reasonable doubt to me. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of. You don't know. The prosecutor's like, you don't know. That's reasonable doubt. Well, what a weirdo! It's like he doesn't know his craft.
No, he's, I, he's play acting whatever they accept as the role of prosecutor in that jurisdiction. It's yeah, we're not here to you know treat the wounded. We're here to stop the threat. That's our number one priority. And so that was my argument: is this crowd has the right to stop the threat? They have the right to defend. Themselves. Sure. Okay. He loses. and Kyle has a right to stop the threat against him. Yes. But he doesn't believe that. He's actually that dense. No, Kyle's just supposed to be beaten to death in the street by yep. skateboards and boots. Well, I've gone through the calculations and determined that I have an inferior right to self-defense to gauge Grosskruit, so I guess I'll just die then. This is it at that point. You can't have two people with an equal right of self-defense. There has to be greater than You can't? That. You can't. You can't, counselor. You can't? <laughs> I would like to speak to you on this particular topic. In a public forum, a debate we can have at your leisure anytime you fucking care to do it. Wouldn't it be you great? Absolutely can. <laughs> Wouldn't it be? Oh, that would be fun. Gosh, I, I would moderate it if I could. There's no way Binger would accept my invitation. That's well, there's, maybe hand, when I. There's handcuffs. They, there's. Maybe stuff. when I bribe him with your class. He's like, hey, I bought this for you. I bought this for you. I think the jury should have considered. And if they agreed with me on that, then I think he should have been found guilty. Obviously, they saw it differently. What What, what do you think was the was the turning point here? Obviously. I mean, you mentioned Gage. Uh, 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 Gage, uh, I can't remember his um, name. You know, he he was. I'm really well informed about this case, Scott, but wounded, <laughs> um, and actually testified. Um, there's some feeling that some of his testimony actually helped. This is the guy uh, whose wife has a boyfriend. Some of there's a feeling that some of Gage's testimony actually helped Kyle. You think you think it was a time where he admitted that he, Kyle <laughs> he didn't, didn't, he shoot, didn't him? shoot me until I had a gun pointed at his head. I stepped <laughs> Maybe that forward, part. drew my gun and pointed it at his head. He didn't shoot you until then, right? Correct. Oh, you think you think that mattered a little bit? Maybe. <laughs> what an idiot. Uh, brutally honest. Kanagastan, he says, as soon as I saw Krauss, I thought earthquake. Google earthquake character images. It's safe and funny. Batlock is good, too. Of course. Yes. Uh, earthquake. I uh, he was. Uh, was he a wrestler or something in a video game? I can't remember. I do remember an earthquake character, but here we go house uh, self-defense because he said he never raised his gun to him until uh this individual went to try to 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 take it away from him which is certainly not unreasonable when the, the person already shot uh somebody uh, no a new york it, bar president who's never held a gun in his hand his entire fucking life <laughs> it it actually like what whether it's legally reasonable or not, um, going and trying to take a gun from someone at closer gauge. If he thought Kyle was actually an active shooter, here's what you do. Gauge is like 10 yards away. Basically anybody can make that shot with any reasonable amount of practice. You just pull out your gun, point it at Kyle and pull the trigger. That's what you do. You like, you don't run up on them. You don't do this weird thing where you're going to run up and like, Whoa, oh, ho, ho, got you. Like dumb, dumb. I'm going to take their gun away. Taking the gun away from an active shooter is the dumbest thing I've ever heard when you're armed. Like if you're armed, just shoot the active shooter. If you think it's an active shooter, <laughs> it's but a high odds proposition folks, <laughs> but gauge shoot didn't. Them. This is the thing. Gage didn't believe by his own testimony. He did not believe that Kyle's an active shooter. That's a pretext for a conviction. That's what they are trying to do. Use Binger's theory that Gage had a superior right to self-defense gauge. Like I'm going to actually give credit here. I think Gage literally believed up until the point that Huber was shot, that Kyle might've actually been in danger. Okay. So no. So I, I think it Gage doesn't was, matter. Right. What he did subsequent to that, obviously, is is his big problem. But a reasonable person engages situation. If he believes that Kyle's an active shooter, is it going to walk up to him and then try and take his gun? You're just going to plug the guy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Gage could have believed. Listen, Gage could be the cleanest motherfucker in the whole world. Thought he was stopping an active shooter. Only if he and, didn't shower. And, and Kyle could still have felt. Listen, I'm being gang attacked in the street. This is just the third of the attackers. 
right. trying to kill me. I'm going to defend myself against this guy too. And the shooting by Kyle would have been completely justified. It doesn't matter how meritorious or not Gage was. It doesn't matter. All that right. matters is what was Kyle's reasonable perception of that attack? Gage could have been a cop trying to make an arrest. It doesn't matter if Kyle reasonably perceived it as another unlawful attack. I agree with you. I'm just pointing out that Binger, by the testimony of his own witness, I believe is wrong about his witness's motivations. That's what I'm saying. I don't think that Gage well, saw Kyle. Kyle's, right. I mean, right. Uh, Russ Cruz is a shithead. They're all shitheads. I mean, yeah. we all know that. But it just doesn't matter. Here we go. Um, but that testimony uh, was uh, appears to be particularly crucial as to showing the mindset of of Rittenhouse. Kind of mattered. What was what was your thought on on putting this individual on the stand and and how his testimony? What did he put on the stand? No, he's saying uh, gross crits. Oh, well, that worked out well. Yeah, that's that's what he's getting at right now. What's your thoughts on doing that after the fact? Honestly, I consider not even calling him at all. Uh, in fact, I talked to him and his attorneys uh, before the trial. Not hiding the truth? Trial. You talked to him and his attorneys before the trial, did you? We're no kidding. You talked to him and his attorneys before the trial. Is that why his DUI charge got dropped? Is that why he wasn't charged with a firearm? You fucker. Of course you talked to him and his attorneys before trial. That shit's obvious. On the fence as to whether or not to put him on the stand because I was concerned uh, that he did more harm than good. Um, to my and, case. Yeah. You know, I think that's what he literally, we, we were handed a situation. He literally just said that, right? Yep. Well, I mean, again, how else do you take that? More harm than good? To what? To justice? Yeah. To Kyle? He, he, to, to Huber, who's already dead? To to who? How would he do more harm than good? The, to uh, Binger. Binger yeah. the finger. And entirely to Binger. The other interesting thing, of course, is you have to call Gage Grosskowitz to the stand to prove this case. Because he witnessed the shooting of Anthony Huber and he witnessed the shooting of himself. And you don't actually have anywhere near as good a fact witnesses. And if you don't call that witness to stand, the the defense is going to be like, why the hell won't they call the one guy who's supposedly a victim to the stand? You have him as a complaining witness. You're going to have to call him to the stand. And if you don't call him, it's going to be a disaster. You You had to call him. The problem was you had bad facts. The fact that you're... Think about this, guys. You're a prosecutor. You're prosecuting a guy for shooting someone in the arm, and you're like, I don't know if I want to call the shooting the guy who got shot in the arm to the stand to talk about him getting shot in the arm. Why? Oh, because he's not actually a victim. That's the biggest reason, because he's right. devastating to your case. Finger knew. One of the biggest weaknesses I see in, in the public I speak with is like, oh, if I'm ever involved in a self-defense event, I'll just hire a lawyer, and the lawyer will fix it for me. I'm like... Well, maybe they will, uh, but if you give your lawyer bad facts, <laughs> yeah. your lawyer has bad facts, and what a lawyer can do with bad facts is extremely limited. What you want to do is give your lawyer good facts. That guy yeah. can win your case every day of the week, twice on Sundays, and smile and take your money, and everybody's happy. But if you give your lawyer bad facts, well, he'll take your money, <laughs> and you'll go to jail. So Immediate don't do that. A mediocre lawyer wins a case on good facts. Right. That's that's the difference. A mediocre lawyer wins a case on good facts. <clears throat> and that's uh, what you want. You want right. to be able to win even with a mediocre lawyer. You don't want your the fate of the rest of your life to be dependent on, I mean, having, you know, the best lawyer in the world, like Rakaida. <laughs> An exceptional attorney may win your case on bad facts, but you can't you can't ever count on it. Here we go. Back to it where we didn't have uh, the most sympathetic victims in the world. And, you know, I, I think Gage Gross a lot of positive, positive Family threateners. Arsonists. Oh, he's talking about the positive qualities of Gage Grosskowitz. Let's hear him. Let's, this will be good. He's a medic. He's out there trying to help people. Um, I, I've met with him several times. I, I like him personally. Um, but there are some things in his testimony that I knew were going to, we're going to come back to hurt us. Oh, did you? I like I like him personally. Uh, I mean, Binger first that no harm, that, then that, no harm. K N O W no harm. T 
tattooed right. on his arm like no how to inflict harm hmm. it, that's also a uh that's a military tattoo from what i've heard military medic tattoo yet gage is not military so i think they tried to avoid what it actually said on his arm there because of that because if they if they came up and stolen valored that guy i mean that would that would have made this even quicker deliberations probably on his part well in my experience he would have disappeared he wouldn't have been a witness but whatever no. You know, he's involved in a civil lawsuit against the city. He's associated with some protest group out there that has a particularly, you know, a name that just doesn't uh, doesn't resonate well with our community. Because they're fucking communists. They're God. They're communists who burn down cities. Binger, come on. A uh, people's revolution or something like that. It sounds like <laughs> like something like that. Like I'm not their chairman or anything. <laughs> That's just not uh, not a good look. Not a good look. Um, so uh, there was some of that, but I felt an arsonist international from the victim. He, you know, he's a Acme victim arsonist <laughs> with a coyote logo, like flaming balls in his hand. Just well, he's, for... a, he's a little unsympathetic. His he's affiliated with a group. I think it was called the Hitler Brigade. <laughs> Uh, the pro Hitler and also the KKK are great. Brigade. The child uh, rapist arsonist brigade. <laughs> <laughs> and their logo is just a rose of them. God. All all 135 ounces of them. Oh, we've got to we've got to present his testimony. They need to hear from him. And that was kind of my attitude throughout a lot of these witnesses. Is I was trying to put all my cards on the table. I'm not hiding anything. Oh, were you? I heard the jury to hear everything good and bad. Um, and old, right. why didn't you call except, Siminski, except then, for all the evidence you, you demand to be excluded? <laughs> Except for all that, because I watched the pretrial hearings, you motherfucker. <laughs> there, there, there was plenty of shit you didn't want heard by the jury. Trust me, oh, I watched you. Uh, there's a chat here from uh, uh, Freedom Falcon says, any chance of getting Invictus Law Firm from Crime and Punishment podcast on the stream sometime would probably get along with Nick and Andrew. Uh, I, I'm not opposed. I've never talked to them, I don't think. I don't, I don't know who they are, so... Um, Unless, uh, well, I might have talked to them in DMs one time. <laughs> but, but, that... Folks, you keep in mind, I'm a guest here. <laughs> this is Nick's channel. I'm here because he invited me. I'm now he's happy a permanent co-host. Now it's fine. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm always. Uh, I'm happy to have you on because it's. It's a. And it's I appreciate it. I really do. So, uh, here we go. Ultimately, it comes down to those those facts of, of killing an unarmed person. But mm. to your point about gross courts, you know. I kind of, I, I got a, a sad chuckle, I guess, out of the, the defense argument that anybody who's got a gun uh, deserves to be killed. Uh, oh, who made that argument? You made that argument. You made the argument. God damn it. And all night long. Well, well, anybody who points a gun deserves to be killed. Uh, well, your guy pointed a gun at everybody that night. That wasn't the defense's argument. This... Um, and you never proved that the defendant did any of that. Yeah, they didn't believe you. I mean, that's what we ultimately get down to, right? Is that the jury, because all, all of that nonsense about the provocation, that's what they seem to deliberate on the longest. The jury didn't believe you because they didn't rule that Kyle was not privileged in self-defense. The same state prosecution that was saying, well, we never saw on video that he was threatened with death. We never, oh, the whole night, everything was captured on video, but the threat to kill Kyle Rittenhouse, that was never captured on video. Well, you know what else was not captured on video? Kyle Rittenhouse pointing his rifle at anybody. Right. That also was not captured. It's so captured on fantasy video. Fantasy video, right. Yeah. You know, it's just, uh, sometimes right. I wonder how much thought they put into these arguments. Like, do you see where, do oh, you see really? Here? Do you see the hypocrisy? Um, and the hypocrisy, mm. there's a, clearly a set of, of rules and standards that apply to the defendant that uh, no one else gets to claim self-defense. No one else. I can tell you, defense. folks, That's from a guy who's older than most of you watching and listening to this, that if uh, this this human being who's currently a prosecutor uh, would would. Uh, he might have had behavioral correction. Uh, in junior high school, in my generation, that would have kept him from becoming this human being. <laughs>
Can you, so uh, again, he's, he's on the wrong issue here. The defense never argued, never argued, not once that no one else would have self-defense. What he's focusing on is that, or what he's failing to focus on is that the other people's claims to self-defense are irrelevant right. to Kyle Rittenhouse's claim. Everyone, that, everyone might've been entitled to a self-defense claim. Yeah. Everybody. The whole world it does kill nothing each other to diminish Kyle's claim. And if, if they had shot Kyle and been prosecuted, they would have the same, the same right to the same legal defense to say, Oh yeah. Uh, Kyle may have been right to shoot somebody, but my client was right to shoot somebody. And that's all that matters. Um, it, it, that, no one else gets to point a gun. No one else gets to even grab a chain or use their boots or just grab a to. chain or use you their get boots. To, but I might shoot you. Jeez. First of all, using the boots, using the boots was a literal assault. That was an assault. That guy was not. Uh, it wasn't a theory. The boots were to the face. <laughs> and the chain preclude uh, pre, uh, was predated any shooting. The the t the chain was preemptory to any shooting at all. Um, Rosenbaum wielding the chain, saying "shoot me, nibba" or whatever, is is not part of the uh, that that that's not in the chain of reasonable self defense. Rosenbaum was not actually privileged to brandish a chain and threaten people. That's something that maybe should be said. If you hold a chain, you say, I'm going to hit you. I'm going to kill you. Back the fuck off or whatever. If you don't have justification for doing that, that's an assault. I'm going to kill you if I get you alone. And then they got him alone and they charged him and he fought for his weapon. It's only an assault in all 50 states, though. Only all of them. And probably the Dominican Republic. But you mean DC. Puerto Rico. Right. Yeah. Whatever. The, the other lesser. Okay, DC whatever. Is, it's colonies. probably also in the Dominican Republic, to be fair. Uh. <laughs> or use a skateboard. You know, all these are scary, scary people. But the 17-year-old running around with a with an assault rifle uh, is is privileged and, and an angel. And, uh, and none of these uh, standards apply to him. So uh, that's unfortunate. But uh, See, like it's I scary. Said, it's scary that people with this juvenile kind of reason. Right? This is like, what, high school? Like freshman college yeah. kind of reasoning. He sounds these like guys a... are bringing people to trial at risk of the rest of their lives in a cage and hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal expenses. And the guy can just say, "Well, it's like this or this or wishy washy or whatever." And blah 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 blah. Th this dirtbag can destroy your life. Did you um? Did you do speech or debate or anything in high school? Well, I, I'm just naturally gifted, really, but I'm just I'm just curious. No, I, no, I okay, so I did uh I did speech in high school my senior year only because I figured I should probably letter in something, right? So I was on the varsity speech team. It was great. Uh, a lot of fun. Super nerd. Yeah, make fun of me all you want, chat. That's fine. I did I did letter in high school, but it was the rifle team. God, I hate you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have a rifle team. So I'm stuck with rifling my mouth off, right? So um but no, I did I did senior speech and that's it, varsity speech. But he comes across as a debate team who had a shitty set of judges, right? Yeah. We lost because the judges were garbage. Listen but it's not to my him. fault. It's yeah, not my fault. That it's their fault. They suck. He's just in here complaining about, oh, well, they, everybody else would have had the privilege, but, you know, here we are. Oh, he doesn't have the privilege. He's got all the privilege. No one else does. Just him. God, he sounds, oh, he sounds like a woman who got kicked out of a yoga class. Or a guy out of a bad, you know, gay breakup. I mean, who knows? We don't know what's going on there. I think we just said the same thing. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Rights, we the jury had to hear from him. If they hadn't, it would have, it would have left questions in their mind that I couldn't afford to leave, and uh, I wanted them to hear from a victim. And I think one of the strongest and most poignant parts of this. I'm sure he was so happy when Game when Gage Grosskreutz said, "No, no, yeah, he actually didn't shoot me until I pointed a gun in his head." I'm sure. I'm sure he was ecstatic about that. That's exactly even, the evidence he was looking for. <laughs> he didn't even point a gun at me at all. He didn't even notion that he was going to shoot me until I decided to shoot him first. Terrible. Yes. Uh, Locknav Livox says, can you file a complaint in the bar uh, with the bar in Wisconsin based on this interview? Look, I, anybody, <laughs> Do whatever you want, 
anybody at all can file a complaint with the bar in Wisconsin. I don't recommend it. I'm not that kind of person who goes after people. Plus, most bar associations or professional responsibility offices ignore complaints from people who are not involved either uh, in uh, by in hiring an attorney or adverse to an attorney in a proceeding because otherwise it's just noise. And so I'm, I'm not that look, I've had 11 bar complaints, not a single one of them from anyone I've ever met in person, all related to YouTube stuff. So, um, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of bar complaining binger. Now Kyle could bar complaint binger. Maybe I don't think he's going to, but he, he could, he was the one who'd be positioned to do that. So that'd be up to him. Not up to me, not up to you. I don't advocate that stuff. You personally, you've had pers like 11 bar complaints, 11 bar complaints, uh, all from YouTube. No, I get it. They're bullshit. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not worried. About, I'm just yeah. thinking to myself, maybe, I, maybe I better call Massachusetts and check out what, what the hell's going on. To be, to be fair to the, the Minnesota op lawyers, uh, professional responsibility office, they have said at the, in all of them, they have said, basically, uh, we take all of these seriously, but if you weren't involved in litigation, it's really less serious and uh, and he's privileged to say whatever he wants outside of the scope of his representation. So um, they've done a very good job. Even the one that was appealed and had a 90 day review by the uh, by the senior person or whatever. They said the same. Thing. Wow. So, um, yeah, it's it's shocking that the lawyers in Minnesota still believe in free speech for now. Hopefully they keep it that way. He's standing over someone that he knows has just killed people. Uh, Grosskreutz has his own gun in his own hand and in my mind is legally justified in pointing it and killing this person. And he says, I'm not the kind of person that could take a life, you know, and there are people out what there. A nice guy. He lied. Binger, you fucking idiot. He lied to you. He rushed up with a, on a guy with a gun in hand, but what, what was he going to do with that gun? Just he's, poke him with it. He's illegally carrying a Glock. He's knowingly <clears throat> illegally carrying it with him. But, but you know, just at a, just at a protest for no reason. Well, I don't, I carry it every day, but I don't believe I could ever take a life. Of, of course he believes he could take a life. If he didn't, he just wouldn't carry the gun. He concealed carried it, by the way, it wasn't an open carry. It's not like some deterrent uh, statement that he's making like Grambo he, over he there. He could carry like extra tourniquets and bandages, right? Chest seals. Yeah. He could carry all that instead of a gun. But he carried a gun he knew he could never use. That sounds credible to anybody. Yeah, it, it, he lied only to Binger, the most uh, idiotic and gullible person I've ever encountered. A decision and make it casually. Um, but a lot of people can't. And clearly we know. It was all better if he had condoms. Right. And of course, <laughs> I you could never use those. Shooting. What was that? Sorry? What did you just say? I, I missed it. No, I Sorry. thought you said something. Never mind. Oh, no, it wasn't me. You represent us, the people, and your job is to get the facts out there um, the best you can. Um, you're in the, the truth finding business, and uh, <laughs> is you to get the, the facts out the best you can and present your case. And it's and it's up to the jury to make that determination. Just the truth finding uh, business. <laughs> you decided here not to appeal. There's not going to be an appeal of this, or is it's not possible uh, on a not guilty verdict. The state. He decided not to appeal. There's not going to be appeal. You, you can't appeal a jury verdict. You can't do that. The, it was a jury verdict. It wasn't a mistrial. It wasn't an order of the court. It wasn't a matter of law to, to appeal. The jury decided on the facts that there's it not went to the end. Grounds. It went to the end. Uh, it has no right to an appeal. Okay, so that's over. Now, I understand. Well, maybe you can do it anyway. Uh, I mean... Just, my, I mean, uh, prosecutors have tried. By the way, like there's a reason we know that it's <laughs> that it's not lawful for them to appeal a final judgment based on a jury, an acquittal based on a jury. The reason we know that is because lawyers have tried. And they said this jury's fucking wrong. Huh. Uh, Rittenhouse was on a, uh, I think what's been described as a right wing news program yesterday, and he refers to you. Uh, he says. He wants to become a is lawyer. This a West West uh, <laughs> Left Wing <laughs> news project right now. This is uh he's talking about Elijah Schaefer's show, where they asked him what he wanted to do, and he said, "I want to be a lawyer to get rid of scumbags like Binger to fight against scumbags like Binger." Here we go. What's Binger say about it? Uh, so that he can go up against 
prosecutors like Thomas Binger um, and uses a derogatory term that I'm not going to use. Um, <laughs> you what do you think of that? <laughs> I honestly haven't paid any attention to Mr. Rittenhouse since this trial has lie has been uh, over. Uh, I've moved on with my life. I have, lie. Uh, I have my own life. I have uh, other cases. I was in trial all today, all day today on a sexual. I was in trial. I, I didn't. I didn't go around and look at the news or anything about Kyle Rittenhouse. This case. I've been thinking about this whole time. That have all these regrets and thoughts about that. I that are literally obsessing over uh, all of the different things and how wrong the jury got it and how wrong everybody was and how he wasn't. Pro he didn't have the privilege of self defense. I. <laughs> I just never thought about this. Before. This was supposed to be a career changing event for him. It's like someone saying, well, yeah, I spent a year trying out for the Olympics, but I didn't make it. Eh, no big deal. <laughs> I never it's thought like, about it. I didn't watch. I didn't yeah. even watch the Olympics. Didn't even watch the, the tryouts. I mean, you know, the guy not, who got my important. eighth alternate slot, you know, <laughs> happened to go. I, I don't even know how he did, though. I mean, oh, he won the silver. That's amazing. That's so fucker. unimportant to me. <laughs> First time I've ever been in the national news in my entire life when I've already run for for you know public office. Uh Spicket 84 says Binger is the Ron Toye of lawyers. Raven and Rosa says Nick been watching since 2016. Always enjoy the show. In 2017, I think you mean. Is it 2017? Jesus, how old are you? I've been I've been doing this for four years. Uh now. oh my god, you're like 84. Yeah, pretty much. I'm almost as old as Schrader. Uh, always enjoy the show and Ricade with Andrew Bronca is great. Learn stuff. And you guys are hilarious. Andrew has a great sense of humor about his first marriage. Funny, good chemistry guys. Well, you have to have a good sense of humor about your first marriage, right? No, or my first you... marriage was great. I mean, ex yeah. except for the horror part, <laughs> <laughs> except for everything that happened. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> the ending was awesome. <laughs> Mandy Karavich says, uh, if an absolute idiot like Binger can make it through law school, pass a bar exam, become a well-paid prosecutor, then I like Nick's chances of becoming president of the United States of America. Oh, 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 oh. oh I didn't see that coming, but <laughs> Look, okay. Fair the, enough. The biggest red pill I ever received on lawyers was getting to law school and talking to the people who were also in law school and going, oh, Christ, I thought I did something special. <laughs> that was so, it. So for me, so I, I took a... a I took several uh, bar exams basically at the same time. I'm not sure how they do that now, but, um, and I passed them all. It was fine. But, <laughs> and then I see people like not pass the bar exam, like famous people, like the Kennedys, like Joe, Jeff, whatever the fuck his name was, the guy yeah. who died in the plane crash, took the, <laughs> the, the, the bar exam. Couldn't pass it. Couldn't pass it. Couldn't pass. Finally took it on private <laughs> a privilege. I didn't have, I took the bar exam in an arena with 5,000 other people, but, Anyway, he took it in private. Finally, he. Okay, what? sorry, <laughs> I I just got the wife glare, so I got like four minutes left. It's um, fine. <laughs> uh, Kennedy. But listen, in, folks, in I, I I used to believe that having the bar exam was like a minimal threshold to at least ensuring complete idiots didn't become lawyers. I've lost confidence in the, <laughs> in the bar exam. I think even the idiots managed to get across. And now you just have to uh, be buyer beware, caveat emptor. Anybody you who proclaims himself as a lawyer, uh, maybe they're competent. Um, maybe they're worth the money you're paying them. And maybe uh, exactly the opposite of all of that. Uh, you, you really can only rely on reputation and what you experience with those people because the truth is, if you're a poorly informed consumer of legal services, anybody will look like a genius to you because you know yeah. nothing. You know nothing. And the only way to not be a poorly informed consumer is to know something before you talk to that lawyer. It, but if you just go in with open eyes like a 16-year-old a, a to the prom, <laughs> well, you're going to get what a 16-year-old to the prom gets, which is not the best experience. And the, uh, the other thing about this is there's so much bar prep available. Like there are really good bar prep programs that you can spend a lot of time taking. And then, um, if you, if you buy Barbary or Kaplan or whatever, whatever bar prep program, and you I want, did that. Yeah. I mean, I, we all do that. Yep. You do it because you have to maximize your chances. But right. my point is if you fail the bar, you take Barbary and fail the bar, they give you That's the pretty next, bad. 
they give you the next course for free. Yeah. That that they give you that four thousand dollars that you just spent. They say, "Well, do it again, do it again," because you really should have passed. And based on our thing, so try again. And but uh, I, I actually, I think, I think Nick, what you do here is fantastic because I'll I'll exclude myself from this. But if you listen to Nick or Kurt or Joe or any of the guys in this channel talk about the law. That's the level of discourse you should, you should expect from any lawyer you're thinking about retaining on a case. If they can't talk to you about your case at that level, confidently informed, they're just bullshitting you. They, they, yeah. they don't actually know that area of the law. Did you uh, did you see real quick before you go? I know you got to go, and that's that's perfectly fine. But did you see Kim Kardashian? Uh, are you familiar with the baby bar in California? After you're like a one L, you have to take the baby bar, which is like a, a little mini bar exam before you can actually, I, I guess, move on. After her fourth attempt, she has finally passed it. Okay. Does anybody want to retain her as an attorney? I mean, no, people just want to retain that ass. Like, that's what they <laughs> want to do. I think Kim Kardashian, if she passes the bar and goes to work for any law firm, she's a whale, right? Like, she's she's a rainmaker. She's going to bring in any yes. number of, because all she has to do is post, post on Instagram, lol, if you need me, just hire me or whatever. And then the firm is going to get uh, a million hits and that's it. And so, listen, if, if the firm is capable, then it's only a marketing gig. I don't care. I mean, yeah. if the firm is going to win your cases for you, that's fine. I mean, that's all I care about. Really. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the thing with, with I, I only care when people do this and you end up clients end up with bad representation. But, right. But if you end up with good representation because Kim Kim Kardashian has a big ass, I mean, whatever, I don't care. As long as you ended up with good representation, it's all good. Yeah. Just guys, make sure if you're hiring Kim, uh, let her pass it off to a senior associate, please. Oh, please do not. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you want an actual lawyer. Don't. Don't, don't just go with the poster. All right, man. Uh, why don't I let you uh, let you peace out and go appease the wife? I will um, look. The chat says the, the poll results are in. We have uh, we have thirty four hundred votes. They said right, 70 wait, wait. I, I, I have to look at my my poll numbers, which okay. are the Disney numbers. Yeah. How could you said I don't know what you're. I don't know what you make on any of this stuff. So what are the Disney numbers? How are the sales looking? Well, they're short, folks. They're short. They're short? Well, yeah, we need more more class signups. January 8th, Saturday. Well, I'm I haven't done I haven't done it yet. Uh the the chat has determined that I will buy two, one for Kraus and one for Binger. So I am doing that uh for sure. So Binger and Kraus are going to get um they're <laughs> okay. going to get uh, gift certificates to your course or whatever. Well, I I will permit you to buy classes from them. All the rest of the crew, uh, you, Kurt, Joe, everybody, the Amazons, everybody, Legal Bites. Uh, I'll give them uh, absolutely free pass. I think Kurt actually paid. Uh, I'll refund his uh, his money um, <laughs> to attend because I, I I want I genuinely want to encourage the normal lawyers to learn this stuff so they yeah they pass it on to other people I'll take it I can use eight CLE credits for sure well I'm not uh, guaranteeing <laughs> CLE is up to you but I'll you gotta, make the argument to the yeah, CLE board I'll give you a syllabus <laughs> got a self report uh the the uh but but I'd rather take that than I'd rather take it even if it wasn't CLE but I'll I'll no take shit. it anyway Hey, um, how bad does CLE suck? <laughs> dude, it's terrible. It's awful. So I'm uh, still barred. I live in Colorado. I'm still yeah. barred in Massachusetts because Massachusetts doesn't have a mandatory CLE and Colorado oh, does. God, and, I'm going to get barred in Massachusetts. Oh, my God. Minnesota. And I, I don't want to spend 12 hours a fucking year sitting in like, I don't know, ethics classes or accounting classes or real estate classes or Jesus Christ, my, my my focus is so narrow. And I, I hate to say it, but folks, I'm, I'm pretty much the expert in my little narrow focus. Yeah. No, it's it's true. And and sitting there having to take, I have to take elimination of bias. Uh, oh, Jesus things. And it's an elimination of bias. There, there, sometimes you can get one where it's like elimination of bias between prosecution and defense and stuff like that. But what you always end up with, uh, inevitably, is the elimination of bias 
of a racist of, of a race thing. And it's like, I'm, I'm not biased against any race. I don't, I don't, I really don't give a shit what color people are. Uh, but anyway, man, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you take yeah. off out of here. And I my will... wife just called me from the bedroom, like 10 feet above my head. So <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> tell right, her brother. I said, hey, tell folks, her I thank, said you. thank you. Love you. Thank you for all for part participating. Nick, thank you very much for having me here again. And I will talk to you shortly. Of course, buddy. Talk to you soon. Okay. Peace. All right, guys, here we go. We're at 46 minutes and 22 seconds. We have to get to 53 minutes and 25 seconds. It's just seven minutes. This will be easy, right? This will be easy to go ahead and finish it, finish up. Uh, big thank you to Andrew Branca and chat. I will be buying um, the classes for Binger and Kraus. Uh, I'm always up for a good meme. Um, how I, I, I got to figure out how to deliver those, but I will do that uh, again. I'll post receipts when it's all done and, uh, and it'll be great. Uh, it'll be great. And yeah, I think, did you hear him say that he might fly out so that we can deliver the books together? Oh, we will. If, if, if he is up for that, I will, I will work diligently to make it happen. I will drive whatever I need to do. If I, uh, uh, we, will, we will make that happen. Yes, it will be filmed. If I have to bring a third party to film it or whatever, we'll do it, okay? Um, if, if he's game for that, I'll talk to him when he's less. Look, I've, I've had my share of Lagavulin, but uh, I'm a professional. So I, I'll talk to him when he's, uh, when he's, when he's clear thinking and say, Hey man, you, you serious? You want to come out here when you get those books, we're going to bring 25 of them to the Kenosha County prosecutor's office. I'll do it. I'll do it for sure. We'll just get the Kenosha County eye guy to come film it or whatever. That'd be great. Or Nathan De Bruin. He can take pictures. Perfect. We got it. This is all built out. I I'm volunteering them. But um, I'll talk to him. I I have no problems. It's about uh, it's about an eight eight and a half hour drive eight, somewhere in there. If I speed, probably seven and a half hour drive out to the Kenosha area. Um, yeah, we we can make that happen. No worries. Got to bring Drex so they can't call you racist, Mike. Because uh, having Drex in the car for that long would be at least good company and good conversation. Um, okay. Uh, Mandy, uh, read that one. Generalissimo says there's a meme that basically amounts to nobody joins the alt-right. We all just get thrown into the pit. Terms like white supremacy have lost all meaning. Binger gussied up for Kyle and Kyle didn't even compliment the scarf. Very, very offensive to Binger. He really wanted to show those man juices off and didn't get it. Here we go. Special assault trial, which is going to wrap up tomorrow. Um, so I have, I have other things that I'm focusing on. I'm totally focused on other things. I don't care what Kyle's doing. I don't care that he went on, uh, this podcast or that podcast or that podcast or that podcast. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Um, I, uh, I continue to get emails, um, from time to time. They've slowed down to a trickle. Um, but, uh, I still get emails from, from kind people out there that share their deepest thoughts with me in, in the sweetest, most gentle terms possible. Uh, yes, I'm being very sarcastic, <laughs> and uh, I largely ignore them. Um, I I don't understand why the focus is on me. Uh, I am not. Because you're a pile of garbage, Binger. That's why. You made this prosecutorial decision. You chose the tactics. You chose. You tried to you tried to lie on the stand. You pulled shady shit. You had a you had a last minute hail mary evidence drop. Everything you did was shady. No one likes it. It's offensive to the notions of justice. That's why the focus is on you. You're lead attorney on the case, and you fucked it up. Any different than ten thousand other prosecutors out there around? No, you did. You did different things than ten thousand other prosecutors. You actually did here. You bordered on actual misconduct. In our country. I'm doing my job just like everyone else. I am no, no more special, no more talented, no more unique. We know you're not more talented. Than any other prosecutor out there. And if this case had fallen on the caseload of one of those other 9,999 prosecutors, they would have done the same thing I did and probably better uh, than I did. Um, so this was never about me. Uh, and I don't, there's no need to focus on me. Uh, this isn't personal. Um, it's a job that I do. Uh, I believe that we had a case. I believe that uh, this was wrong. I believe there should have been justice and consequences. 
um, the jury disagreed. And that's the beauty of our system. We give it to the power to the jury and they make their decision. And once that's done, we have to accept it and move on with our lives. And that's what I'm doing. Um, Mr. Rittenhouse can say what he wants to say. I'm, I'm not going to pay any attention to it. Ryan, Ryan, what do you, what am I doing wrong? Did you, uh, did you send me a message that I haven't looked at my, I haven't looked at my phone all day. Wait a minute. Uh, I haven't gotten a message from you since Saturday, which I know the message was for me to respond to, but I haven't gotten one since Saturday, which is your fault. Here we go back to this. Well, as attorneys, I think we understand that, that you're, you're doing your job and attorneys have. No, we don't understand it because we demand better. No, David Miranda, stop it. Stop it. We demand better behavior from our prosecutors. And if the defense attorneys for Kyle would have done something shady and underhanded, if they would have lied about the circumstances, if they would have tried last minute evidence drops, things they didn't do. If they would add an expert who doesn't have any expertise, if they would have done any of that, we would be calling for the same thing. We would be saying, Hey, no, we demand better, but it's worse because Binger is the state. He represents the state. He wields the power of the state. We demand better from our government. Not as attorneys. We understand. No, I remember the first ethical rule of prosecutors seek justice, not conviction. And Binger broke that. He broke it willingly, repeatedly. And this is evidence that he broke it over and over again. To uh, provide representation, this is your uh, chosen field. And no, providing representation for a private, let's be real. I mean, as a state attorney, as a prosecutor, you do represent the state. But that is wildly different than providing representation for someone who hires you in like a civil suit. That's a person that hires you. They choose you. You have an interview with them. And you're like, OK, I'm going to I'm going to represent you on this matter. We're going to take it uh, to trial or some other resolution. We're going to do this. We're going to make these legal arguments. We think you're justified because of this, this and this. You have to make those tough questions like, I, I don't I don't know if you're justified. Binger doesn't have that conversation with the state. Binger is the state. He is an agent of the state. He is not a represent. He's not representing the state. He is the state. That's the difference between me representing myself and me hiring an attorney to represent my interests. The attorney representing my interests may go, Hey man, calm down. We got to talk about this and this and this, these are big problems. Whereas me representing myself. I'm like, fuck you. I'll do what I want. I do it. I'll shit all over myself and I'll make tons of money. Fuck you. That might be a bad plan, right? Like if you shit all over yourself and make tons of money, you probably, one, you probably won't make a ton of money, but but two, like taking that cavalier attitude might not be the best approach. So do you get a third party in there who's a little less interested in you and they say, uh, let's just mitigate this and that or whatever. Here we go. You're, you're doing your job to the best uh, of your ability. I don't know that the general public always completely appreciates uh, that uh, we certainly at the Bar Association appreciate that. We appreciate you. Uh, Fuck off. I want to thank you for your service as uh, an assistant. Thank you for your service? What, like he's a veteran? Like he just, I went through war. I was out there representing the country. Come on, knock it off. This guy tried to abuse an obvious self-defense case. It was an obvious self-defense case. And it was obvious from the way he wrote it, not from anything else. He wrote the complaint or his office, if he didn't do it, wrote the complaint. And it was from the face of the complaint. It was obvious that this was self-defense. They knew it was self-defense from the start. They did the prosecution anyway. They never had to. Corey Boatwright says it would be fun to take Bronca's course with you and the others. But please remember the lay people could be intimidated in a CLE setting with you all. I've helped with a firearm CLE years ago and it can quickly become a lawyer's only conversation. I don't know how you guys uh, do CLEs, but I just sit there and I don't, I don't really participate in the discussion. I just want to get my, I, I want to listen. I want to get my hours and get out. District attorney. I want to thank you for 
sharing your time with us here on Miranda Warnings and giving the insights on this really fascinating case. Uh, was it fascinating, David? So fascinating that you didn't pay attention to anything that happened. You have no knowledge of the facts. You have no knowledge of the law. You don't even know basic criminal law or criminal procedure, but it was really fascinating, wasn't it? This is a fascinating case. I have no idea what happened. Thank you for sharing your insights that I can't even check because if I knew at all what happened, I would be able to say, eh, what about this and this and this, but I don't. We are very appreciative of both of those things. So I want to thank you for that, Thomas. Well, you're welcome. Thank you, Dave, for the opportunity to call him Claire to speak with you. And I appreciate the uh, the discussion and the questions. And and uh, I don't know if anyone will be uh, paying any attention or listening, but uh, I, I hope uh, somebody out there got some something of value out of this. Well, oh, don't worry. We brought a couple thousand people to listen, Binger. It's fine. If no one else is going to listen, we were. We were always going to listen. It's been very enlightening, and I know uh, many attorneys are going to be very interested in what you have to say. And obviously, what we've been talking about is very serious and important. We do have something of a lighthearted feature on Miranda Warnings that I want to ask you about. We have something called Music, Book, or Movie. And you can tell us uh, what, what takes you away uh, from uh, some of these serious topics. Brokeback Mountain. Rent. Uh, that you enjoy. <laughs> uh before night falls <laughs> well uh, all three of those and it's it's hard to narrow it down because uh i can talk all day and all night about books music uh, or movies um so i uh I, I i'm a big movie buff uh, i've got older siblings who i grew up watching uh you know 1930s and 40s film noir and and the classics and just because you watch 1930s cinema doesn't make you a big movie buff. Oh, that's a fallacy of antiquity. Come on. Step it up, Binger. Hitchcock and uh, John Ford Westerns and things like that. So movies have always been. Uh... I'm, I'm a bit of a movie buff. I, <laughs> I like the old movies only. Fuck off. Tell me about new movies, you pussy. Uh, nearest and dearest to my heart. Um the Sting has always been my all-time favorite movie. I uh, absolutely adore it. Um, but uh, I, I guess most pertinent to our discussion, uh, one of the movies that I think about a lot is Michael Clayton, which is a George Clooney movie that came out about 14 years ago, and he plays a, a lawyer in, a, I think, a New York firm, actually. Lawyers who watch lawyer movies make me want to hang myself. He actually comes to Milwaukee uh, at the beginning of the movie, but um, one of the messages of that movie and I, I hope i'm not spoiling it for someone who hasn't watched a movie for, from 14 years ago but um you know i spent about half my career in private practice and i've spent about half of it as a prosecutor and so um most of the attorneys that are, are listening to us uh probably been in one of those fields at one point or the other um and i uh, private practice wasn't for me uh and it is for a lot of other folks and that's that's fine I that should tell you a lot I should tell you a lot, right? A Diamond Duck says, even My Cousin Vinny, My Cousin Vinny isn't the lawyer movie. <laughs> he didn't, he's not actually licensed. He hadn't passed the bar. I respect that. But the movie Michael Clayton, I think, uh, says a lot about what that can, the, the process can do to us and what, uh, what it means for us. And, um, you know, I think, most of us have had a time in our lives when we've had to undertake some sort of professional assignment or responsibility that we find personally less than satisfying, perhaps even completely uh, antithetical to our beliefs. And uh, we do it because it's our job. We do it because it's our ethical obligation. Um, one of my joys in being a prosecutor is that I very rarely find myself in that situation. Um, I have the discretion to make my own decisions about my cases. And I am at a point in my career where my office gives me some freedom uh, to pick and choose some things that I may not otherwise have. Listen to that. He chose this case. He had discretion. He didn't have to take it. He wanted it. He wanted this. I mean, I've said it before that his, his boss could have taken the case. He could have signed it to a different DA. Thomas could have said, nah, you know what? I think another DA would be a better equipped. He chose this. In private practice, you know, I think anybody who's been in that situation has dealt with clients, has dealt with cases that uh, 
we just dread, you know, it's, uh, it's a tough situation to be in. And uh, so that's a movie that I think does as good of a job as any film I've ever seen of capturing uh, that, that philosophy. And it's a, it's a movie that maybe non-lawyers uh, aren't as drawn to as, as those of us who are lawyers uh, are. Um, I don't remember if George Clooney was nominated for an Academy Award for that, but I do think it's one of his finest performances and the rest of the, Tilda Swinton did win. Um, best Supporting Actress for it, and she is phenomenal in it as she is in everything she does. Um, but um, Tom Wilkinson's in it. And- Wait, who who won Best Supporting Actress? Who was it? Who does he think is phenomenal and wonderful and everything? I didn't hear that. And uh, um, uh, well, that director who passed away, I forget his name now. But uh, anyway, there's a lot of good actors, uh, and it's a great story. And I love Roman Polanski movies. Story, it's a great movie. It is... Um, Tilda Swinton. Who the hell is Tilda Swinton? Let's see. I haven't watched this stupid movie because, oh, I I typed Yoda Swinton. Tilda Swinton. Oh, that one? That's Tilda Swinton? This, uh, This person? Hold on. Holy cats. This is Tilda Swinton or whatever. That that's uh is it weird that the actress Binger Simps for looks like a man? Is I mean, is that weird? I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just maybe I'm just wrong, but I mean i I find that to be predictable. Uh, Michael Palmer says, Ricada Law, Nick, would you consider looking into the FSU law professor, Dan Markle, whose wife hired hitmen to assassinate him and was never indicted. Everyone else was whole family was in on it and prosecutors knew it. Tons of evidence. Uh, Maybe. Sure. It's extraordinarily well written. There's, there's very little uh, wasted uh, motion in that movie. Everything feeds towards the plot and uh it's well edited and um it's it's one of my all-time favorites so uh in turn i mean there, we can we can talk all day about you know 12 angry men and the verdict and a few good men and and all these courtroom dramas over the years. god watch anything other than a courtroom drama as a lawyer years but uh i would put that up there as one of the finest uh, legal based films that i've ever seen great so michael clayton uh will give it another We'll give, give it another look now with fresh eyes 14 years later. Thank you very much. And again, thank you for your candor with us here today on Miranda Warnings. Thank you for your service. And, and uh, Thomas Finger, uh, Assistant District Attorney uh, in Kenosha, uh, uh, we wish you the, the best of luck going forward. Thank you, Dave. Have a good holiday season. Thank you. You too. If you like. There you go. That's the interview. That's the interview. Look, good on him getting Binger on. I think Binger had to try desperately, you know, try desperately to find some friendly locale to have him. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to be too critical here, but as a lawyer myself, I can't stand lawyer movies. I don't want to. I don't want to watch those. John Grisham. I don't. I don't want to watch The Rainmaker. Like my cousin Vinny is funny because it's not a lawyer movie. Now, ironically, of course, my cousin Vinny is probably the most accurate legal procedure movie that's out there, and it's not entirely accurate. It's just pretty good at some specific things. That's ironic because it's not a law movie. It's not a lawyer movie. It's a drama about this guy, this uh, this guy who's not not actually admitted to practice law. Uh, he's not admitted to practice law where he's practicing. He's not admitted to practice law back home. Um, it's this this thing. It's about Vinny and uh, Marissa Tomei who is smoking in that movie. It's it's about all sorts of different things. It's about this interplay of Ralph Macchio and and Vinny, uh, Ralph Macchio's friend and Vinny as well. 
this this weird relationship he has and develops with the judge uh this this endearing character this endearing character who is described by ralph macchio as the guy who could always figure out the magicians right he could always you know he could always figure out those magicians uh he's like oh it's in his shirt oh it's in his sleeve oh, we got a we got doves in his pants uh that's that's how Vinny is. Vinny is not described as a lawyer, a competent lawyer, an adequate lawyer. He's a guy that can spot mistakes who happen to end up in law in some way. It's not a lawyer movie. It's not a good lawyer movie, even though it's the best lawyer movie in so many ways. But accepting my cousin Vinny, you would never watch a courtroom drama because they're boring, they're horrible, they're wrong, they're incorrect. They don't they don't represent court appropriately. They don't represent the actions of the attorneys appropriately. No one wants to watch that when you do it. But yeah, what a, what a terrible choice. What a terrible choice. You could choose anything, anything on earth. Hey, what do you like to calm down with? Uh, book, movie, music. It's like, <laughs> what I really like to do is watch this George Clooney movie. Of course you like to watch a George Clooney movie. You got like one of the most handsome men on the planet and then a female who looks like a man. Of course you want to watch that binger. Thank you. We all knew. We all knew. Thank you. Ugh. God, what a what a fucking boring person. Uh okay. Next. It's time. It is super chat, super chad time. You guys are amazing. I'm going to read a whole bunch of super chats. Uh, Wolfgang Dale. Oh, and Kim Potter will resume tomorrow, 9 a.m. I mean, I'll be on it. Look, I set the stream for 845. Oh, excuse me. I set the stream for 845 to force me to be up as early as possible and try to be on. But the goal is to be on by nine. So, uh, I'll probably be late to that, but I'm, I'm, uh, the reason I'm late to eight 45 is because I won't be late to nine. That's the goal. So hopefully we have that happen. Hopefully, uh, Andrew is up. He's uh, live tweeting and he joined on the stream today. It was great. Um, hopefully he'll join tomorrow. I don't know if he will or not, but, uh, hopefully he's able to. And, uh, it's always great having him around. Wolfgang Dale says, did Potter shoot right? Or was it framed? No, it turns out today from all the expert testimony that Potter did indeed shoot Dante Wright. Eddie Oliver says, I was just reading some of the filings in the Foster shooting. And if you think Binger is bad, the lead investigator in the case of the prosecutor's office made him alter his statements and other evidence. Can I DM them to you? Yes. Yes. DM them to me. Either, uh, either DM them to me on Twitter or email them to me or discord or something. I don't, I don't know how you DM me, but do it please. Um, I would love to look into that case. I just have no basis for it. Hola Kyle. Hola Kyle says, how long before we get Bronca's wife comes knocking? Well, it turns out um, just under, you know, two hours and 35 minutes. Uh, Dustman Roach just says laid back Bronca's best Bronca. Mike says, I came for Viva. I stayed for Nick. I stay up late at night for Savage. No tie bullhorns Bronca. P.S. That Lagavulin is amazing. Dude, I'm not going to drink anymore because I'm like, five drinks deep this is how deep i am this is a new bottle uh I, I don't know how you measure it i'm not a heavy drink guys uh everybody's like oh n n drinking contest nick you'll win this is enough to get me uh wasted it's fine um but this is a phenomenal fucking bottle of whiskey it's 125 bucks where i am um not not bank bank breaking but a little more than your daily whiskey type thing but, um, you know, as a little, as a special occasion, that's not super expensive. This is, this is amazing. This is amazing. Uh, Max R says donut operator has awesome sovereign citizen bingo video. Donut operator is great. I'd love to talk to him. I haven't reached out to him or anything. One, I don't know how. Um, two, uh, he seems like a very cool dude. 
Very cool, dude. I would love to talk to him at some point. Indeed, I Need Truth says, thanks for covering this interview, guys. There's no way I could withstand another 53 minutes of Fluffer Boy without y'all roasting him. Phoenix Lord says, you got to reply on the police, but what if the police are being held back and you know they won't come save you for political reasons? Or you've got to rely on the police, sorry. Yeah, that's why self-defense exists. The police won't be there. Police won't be there. Gil says Binger is just pissed because he couldn't get Rosenbaum to chase him. It would be a short chase. Um, Nexit says, by the way, whoever cut Nick's hair should be crucified. Look, man, it's it's days of wearing this fucking headband right here. I'm gonna, I've got to find some better headphones that don't uh, do that as much. But uh, it's days of wearing that, and also uh, I need to hopefully get a shower in before tomorrow, before tomorrow's stream. Uh, Zachary B. Thank you so much. You donated a whole bunch to the stream today. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Andrew Hansen says Kennedy versus Louisiana and Coker versus Georgia are two of the great injustices of U S history. Rape and murder should be equal mandatory death sentence. Damn. Damn. Uh, Donald Gooch says law of self-defense. My dad is CCL, but has wrong notions of self-defense. Got him your book soft, not hard. For Christmas to set him straight. Well, if it's soft, not hard, maybe it won't set him straight. Maybe it'll set him gay. James Howard says, they think we are crazy because we expect people to not commit crimes. I think expecting people to not commit crimes is pretty low bar. I agree. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jay Winkler says, sure, in-ear monitors. Are they good? Are they comfortable? Can I wear them for, can I wear them for eight hours? Because if so... I'll buy them. The problem with the in-ear things and anything Bluetooth is um, desktop Bluetooth fucking sucks. Because I have these great uh, the the Bang & Olufsen headphones that are Bluetooth, but I don't know if it's just like all the fucking metal on a desktop computer, but the Bluetooth on them is is garbage. It's unreliable. It's unreliable. They're about 300. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try them. I'll try them for, for sure. Uh, look, if they're, if they're good, if they're good, I'll try them. If they have shit Bluetooth, I'm going to be fucking pissed. I just, I just want good, comfortable in-ear headphones, over-ear headphones. I don't care what they are. I just want them to not be, not be, look, I don't need help going bald. You, you fuckers uh, talk about it all the time. Oh, your, your hair's receding. <laughs> the only thing retreating faster than French is your hairline. Hey, you assholes. That hurts. It hurts me in here. Just like Dante Wright. I'm hurt in here and here and here and maybe over here. Uh, Wolfgang Dio says, oh, yes. Yeah, standing, standing up for oneself is crazy. Thanks, Binger. Alex Urban says, Kyle used full metal jacket. Binger said it was reckless, but you know if Kyle used hollow points, Binger would have said Kyle intended to hurt people. Yes. Yes, he would have. Uh, let's see. Wolfgang Deo says, who could it, would, would, could it mean if I invoke the 10th Amendment? You, you, you don't invoke the 10th Amendment. Uh, Winter says Binger sounds disturbingly like Hillary Clinton. <laughs> P.S. Brandino. Brandino says, well, welcome to lawyer status. Just Pewitt says one Binger plus no ties equals good times. Dash Dash says, where did that picture of Binger and the Binger banger on the boat even come from? Kenosha County. I got a hold of it. I don't know how. Probably from Facebook or something. Uh... New dislike button says people making the size argument for Rittenhouse have obviously never watched Michael Chandler versus Dan Hooker fight MMA best sport in the world. No Keith Hackney versus Emmanuel fucking Yarbrough. How can you even, how can you even try to MMA size queen me without mentioning the greatest David and Goliath match of all time? Keith the hammer Hackney. It wasn't this thing. Versus Emmanuel the Goliath Yarbrough. Seven feet tall. 700 pounds. Versus like 6'3", 6'4", 
215, 220, Keith Hackney. Keith Hackney, who would be big in any room he's in, except a room with Emmanuel Yarbrough. He knocks that big motherfucker down. He starts hammering. He breaks his hand, hitting the back of Emmanuel Yarbrough's head. One of the best fights UFC's ever done. Weight classes are bullshit. UFC used to be about them streets. And now UFC takes it from behind in the sheets. Uh, Sorensen Farm says, speaking of the 10th, you should interview Michael Bolden on the 10th Amendment Center. Miranda Sin uh, Sin Sinistra, simp for Gorsuch, says, I'm now thirsting for Gorsuch, and I blame you, Nick. Yeah, check out my video, by the way, on, uh, I mean, if you watch the live stream, you don't have to watch the video, but you should anyway, because it makes me money from YouTube. Um, but uh, the video on uh, Andrew Kopelman being terrified of Gorsuch. You know what's great? So I wrote that headline, or the 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 tagline, right? Just a second, guys. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Uh, so here's the here's the thing. Woo. Uh, I have a I have a six year old. I have five kids, right? But I have a six year old, and um, she has night terrors from time to time. And night terrors can be um, can turn into a bathroom accident. So I was just by happenstance, I heard. Uh, I heard the six-year-old screaming and uh, screaming in the middle of the night and she was nowhere near her bedroom or a bathroom. 
and I had to run and get her to a bathroom before that turned into an accident. Uh, so there you go. That's, that's what we had to do. Um, she's, uh, she's, she's super wonderful, but yeah, that's, uh, had to get that out of the way. Cause you don't want, you don't want to be cleaning up uh, a bathroom mess. Is this normal for younger kids? I don't know. She has night terrors. I can't, uh, can't, can't do much <laughs> about that. Um, and, and it's crazy. So they'll listen to you. They'll, they'll hear things and respond, but they don't process them. Like they don't know where they are. They don't know what they're doing. So it's, it's uh night terrors are a wild thing. Um, bro Duke back to this says, uh, a business can't discriminate on race, but it can discriminate on speech. What gives fluffer boy, 2004 says Ricada law makes a written house, a written home. Alec urban says, how did Kyle do on the stand binger? Well, he spanked me, but not the way I like busted knuckle says, could those who donated to Kyle's fund file a class action lawsuit against Lynn Wood? Should he get the money back to his hands? Yeah. <gasps> in theory or more appropriately, they could just make a, they could just make various complaints to regulatory bodies that regulate charities. Kimberly Ashcraft says with Vax mandate blocked, can my employer still demand my Vax status? Yes. Can they force any part of the mandate while it's blocked? Uh, roll tide. Yeah, they can. Um, private mandates are not really blocked right now. The, the, the state action is what the Supreme Court can block. Unfor now, it may be limited by if you're in a union, if you're in a right to work state, if you have a specific contract, all of those things play into what you what they can and can't do. But if you're just an at will employee in a random state and your employer has a vax mandate, they probably can do that. They don't need the government to do that. The employers wanted the government to do that so that they would have cover from their employees, but they can do it without the government. Jay says, enjoying the commentary from you and your guests. Also, the cat painting behind you reminds me of Binger's face. The moment Grosko had said, correct, about pointing the gun at Kyle. Can't unsee it. I need I need a good place to hang that picture. I also have this. Uh, look at that. That's my Xbox fridge down there. It's not plugged in yet. I got to get, I got to figure out where to put it um, so that it doesn't uh, obscure the painting up above, but also, you know. I got I to figure out where what to do with those things. S. Becker says, what are your thoughts about those two slimy detectives who are smirking their way through their testimony? Oh, the detectives in Kenosha can get fucked. Galaxy Express Media says, simply, ha simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Just for you, a Dave Matthews fanboy. Lol, I'm not. I, fucking Dave Matthews sucks. Loving the trial live streams, Nick and panelists. Last says, did anyone else need a shower after listening to this interview? The former head of the bar was this slimy yuck. Newbie says, Binger accused Kyle's lawyer of coaching him. Specifically use the word, isn't that a violation of some sort uh, to defame the other lawyer? Um, maybe. Maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, STFU FFS says, damn it, Nick, you mentioned that unholy pile of garbage Paul McCartney song been in my head ever since your goddamn mind virus super spreader trevor r says he's not kidding uncivil took a beating yesterday that's one body that will never be found and a bronca retainer that will never need to be paid miranda sinistra simp for gorsuch says my super chat disappeared because youtube hates gorsuch no i saw it i saw it miranda the vespa guy says do you guys think uh binger rides a unicorn on his way to work in whatever la la land reality he seems to be living in Look, he rides on the face of the unicorn, if you know what I mean. Uh, Joseph Fazio says, hey, self-defense, when you jump, when you jumped, did you Superman fly with two fists forward out of the plane? Pride or honesty says some people should feel remorse, like Rosenbaum's girlfriend for enabling him and the governor for rejecting National Guard help, among others. Correct. Correct. Alec Urban says, I have it on good authority that Binger wanted to put Kyle behind bars for life so he could do conjugal visits. Gross. Correction says he likes being the receiver of a sledgehammer. Uh, Ron Tarver says Binger's highest aspiration is to be considered a power bottom. Abe Eckstein says most people get traumatized after getting touched by Rosenbaum. Bay Shaman says if Twitter was a lawyer, it would be Binger. <laughs> Freedom Falcon says any chance of getting the Invictus Law Firm from the Crime Punishment podcast on the stream sometime would probably get along great with Nick and Andrew. Oh, that one wasn't needed. It was right there. 
Um, the Invictus Law Firm. I, I can't remember. I feel like, does the Invictus Law Firm, are they affiliated with a guy who's like a presidential candidate that got arrested? I can't remember his name. Maybe. I don't know. Look, I got a I got approached to do a uh a while back. I I didn't really talk about this, but I got approached to do a legal defense fund or whatever. People approach me for various fundraisers and money raising opportunities all the time. It was a legal defense fund that would specifically defend people like Richard Spencer or whatever and do do all this stuff and I mean, I don't know. I, I Look, I believe that Richard Spencer has a has a platform to speak, but um, and, and stuff like that, but I'm, I'm not, look, there's a difference between people having a right to speak and me actively advocating and raising money for their platforms. And, uh, I, I don't know. Invictus law firm. Um, I feel like there's a guy, is it Augustus Invictus? Is it Augustus Invictus? Is that the guy I'm thinking of? I don't know. That guy's in, uh, I think that guy's in jail or whatever. Um, and he shouldn't be as far as I can tell, but maybe he is. I don't know. They saw your Ranger Spencer Skyrim streams. This was before those. This was before those. Uh, the Ranger Spencer Skyrim streams are top shelf. Mark Koch says, is jump kick guy being prosecuted? Uh, no, no, he's not. But see, that's the that's the big thing um, with with endorsements or whatever. Look, I'm I'm not here to endorse anybody. Uh, if if I want to give to a cause, I'll give to a cause. I'll tell you guys about it. And if you want to give, great. If you don't, great. That's fine. But like, I believe in the freedom to speak. That doesn't mean that I'm going to be able to interview or or whatever every single person ever on the planet because everybody has the same right to speech, in my opinion. That's, that's not how I'm going to be able to do things. And I, I'm not, I'm certainly not going to endorse fundraisers for everybody on the planet either. Um, Mr. Tech says, hi, Nick. I just want to inform you in chat that I had to cheat. I just had cheese toast. Please don't make a poll cheese toast. Yes or no. I won't. I won't. Um, Uh, Zachary B. Thank you. Lost and thoughts. 87 says Kyle in Texas should be in prison for those tight boot cut jeans. That is a crime. Love you all. Oh yeah. Kyle, Kyle Kareth. <laughs> Aaron Katrin says, how's that Lagavulin? I was sipping on some Blanton's earlier Prost. Dude, it's good. It's very good. I can't drink anymore because I'm toast. Um, Darth Bobcat says, of course, Rittenhouse is more dangerous. He's undefeated. Evan Bouchong says, I guess I'll join you guys for a drink instead of getting a proper amount of sleep. Keep up the good work, fellas. Oh, guys, my sleep schedule is trash during these trials. I'm going to get done with this. I'm going to I'm gonna hang out for a little bit. I'm probably not going to go to sleep till 4. I'm going to wake up at 8. Um, Porcupine Mayhem says, damn you three. I'm trying to go to bed, and yet the knowledge entertainment keeps going and going. Cheers, I've just poured three fingers of scotch. P.S. Minnesota, born and raised Wisconsin resident and binger. Sucks. I agree. Rob Smith, I've had Hard Bastard on the show. Had him on the show. Uh, go check that episode out. He seems like a good dude. I'd have him on again. Talk about stuff. Um, Miranda Sinistra, simp for Gorsuch, says binger smells his own farts. Wilder's Honey says hitting the dab pen and then the sheets. See you tomorrow for the tea baggings with Earl. Wolfgang says least to most dangerous. Rosenbaum is dead. Kyle and then Binger as most dangerous. I think Binger is the most dangerous of all of them. He's the guy who has state sanctioned authority to ruin your life. Yeah, by the way, guys, if you didn't know, like a lot of people tell me, oh, get this person on the show, get this person. Make sure you go to my channel and actually search. Um, because a lot of people I have talked to surprising people, um, that I've talked to now, I haven't had the AK guy or anything like that on, but, um, you know, I've had Tim pool on the show, had, uh, had Helen Dale on the show. Helen Dale is a, a staunch advocate of free speech in the UK. Sargon of Akkad, uh, Arch, uh, Warhammer. We've had all, all sorts of people. I, I don't, I don't know. Vic, 
uh, hard bastard. Uh, Sinatra says a lot of these guys have been on the show. Um, and, and those were great shows. Go check them out. Been doing this a little while. Pride or honesty says Rosenbaum presents no danger at all in the depths of hell. Not applicable says hire Kurt. He's good. Get this man out of IP law. Yeah. He needs to get out. He he's looking uh, less and less happy with his situation. Kendra Paris diamond duck. Yes, absolutely. I, I would love to have her on again, by the way. Um, Kendra seems good. I'll, uh, at some point I'll, I'll re email her and ask her. Cause I'd, I'd love to talk more about red flag laws. Bob Pivel says, what's the difference between Kyle Rittenhouse and LeBron James? Kyle Rittenhouse doesn't miss his shots under pressure. Hey, Oh, uh, Simple Sandman says, I don't know. They kind of deserved what they got. Phoenix Lord Asterman says, he would have proven his defense by admiring his handiwork. Brilliant analysis. Jason says, Nick, Kurt, and Andrew had a car stolen and cooperated with police, giving them security footage. Now police are coming to me saying the car was used to commit a double homicide in Chicago. Advice, hire a lawyer. Hire a lawyer. Kaniga, please, says, just be a communist if you're afraid to support their only ap active opposition. Look, I I don't have time to look into every single uh, funding opportunity that comes out. Um, and and there, there, there's a distinct difference between being opposed to someone for something and being for things that I wholly support. I support everybody's right to fundraise and speak. Absolutely. If a communist wants to speak, I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Say whatever you want. But uh, the, I'm not going to I'm not going to tell them that I'm going to endorse their fundraising and tell them to fundraise on this platform. Um, there are there are different levels that you you go through as you have higher and higher influence. And that's something I have to consider. So that being said, um, I can't I can't just automatically support everybody who sends me an email and says, hey, you need to support this. I have to look into it. I have to figure it out. Most of the time, most, to be honest, most of the time I ignore those emails anyway. Um, because if I'm not already looking at it, I'm not going to go based off of an email. Um, Kalinar says, uh, yo, Nick, let's see the scars hat. It'll make your office chair at least 500% faster. Um, I don't think I've gotten it yet. I, I need to check my PO box. Uh, Idaho plumber. Thank you. Welcome for to paralegal status. Snort frog says I'm getting a friend hired for Christmas just so Andrew doesn't have another ex-wife. <laughs> Wait, that didn't come out right. Evan Bouchong says binger logic. You don't feel bad about killing to defend yourself. You're guilty. If you do feel bad, you have a guilty conscience and you're guilty. Uh, Let's see. Next is uh, Angry Bellsprout says, watch this on Sitch and Adam yesterday. One Zero says, boot knife from Russia with love. Rosa Kleb did it best. Got my books from Bronca. Media mail, WTF. Just kidding. A bargain, bargain at thrice the price. Thank you. Uh, AZ Beauty 7 says, it happens in countries all across the country. Counties all across the country. Some are worse than others. Violate rights to indict SMH. What's her name says, would you have Chris Dangerfield on? I don't, I don't know. I don't know who that is. I, I don't know guys. I'm, I'm very limited by timing and scheduling. I don't, I don't always care about platforms or sizes or anything like that. I'm not a size queen on interviews. Um, I'll interview people with a million followers. I'll interview people with 50 followers if I think it'll be interesting, but I can't, I can't say yes or no on who I'll have on. I'm not opposed at the outset of having anyone on. Um, but I have a limited amount of time and attention and that makes it tough to say yes or no to whoever, uh, not applicable says good thing that Binger and Ron Toya are in separate States because I don't think there's enough lube in either to prevent them from starting a friction fire. Gross drunk shovel says just got here as Bronca in best Bronca mode yet. Yes. A vaccine says Binger always knows about two sides. Most importantly, the second side amateur Ant says, Andrew, did you tell her fixing $30,000 for the house damages her Disneyland? Now Corey Boatwright says bought the advanced course bonus package Bronca plus some extra States. That's why Ricardo only gets small donations out of me. That's fine by me, buddy. 
Mazzy ba Barnett says, honestly, is there any legitimate reason for Binger to be this bad at his job or be this trashy of a person? Is this normal for prosecutors? Well, I have a secret for you. I have a secret for you. Turd Ferguson says, Beverly from Unsafe Space has been trying to contact you about an interview with Carter or Carrie from that show. Turd, do you have a way to facilitate that contact? Because I, I, like legitimately, I see a bunch of contacts and I recognize a lot of them. I don't recognize that one. Um, so I'm not sure if it's getting through. Uh, if you have a way to facilitate that either through locals or through Discord or through DMs on Twitter, whatever it is, help me out. Um, I'm, I'm not saying I'll interview them, but help me out with it. We'll see. Uh, Donald Gooch says, Bronca, I'm spending $5 to save you thousands. Return times requires medical excuse. It's the only way to experience Disney these days. Um, look, the private tour at Disney is great. It gets you on all the rides except for like one. There's like one ride that you can't get on fast at Disney with the, with the back backstage tour. It's great. Whiskey says, I just finished the Iron Liz stream and some of my favorite villains in stories are the ones who are just being evil and loving it. Yes. Yes, evil villains are important. Uh, and they should be. They should be evil. Um, Sarah Boatwright says, Andrew Bronca gets better every week. Zachary B, thank you. Caligula Love says, say the line, Bronca, carry a gun, so dot, dot, dot. Steven Robertson says, Andrew needs to get Griff lessons from Jack. Henry Dixon says, another slot gone. See you January 9th, Mr. Bronca. If you come to Austin, I'd love to hear about that. Newbie says, Wisconsin legalized permitted carry in 2011. Illinois was the last state to legalize permitted carry in 2013. Razor 390 says, if I ever see Binger in public, I'll know he's a gun owner slash carrying and just yell active shooter at him and use his podcast statements as evidence. Don't do that. But that is funny. Gummy says, Binger, I have the two gay fusion earrings, one on each ear. I learned about fusion from Piccolo as well. Or and, and as we all know, earring fusion is permanent. I fuse with Kenosha. I am Kenosha. This is divine justice. The interesting thing, of course, is that Binger doesn't live in Kenosha. And he's talking about Kyle not living in Kenosha. Having no ties to the community. Uh, Phoenix Lord Asterman says, get the elf runkle on. Batgoat says, I can't drunkenly pass out without chatting. Prior Lake rules. I mean, Prior Lake's not bad. Not bad. Whiskey says, Tyranids are the perfect enemy to follow up. Space Marine 1, thoughts on Titus becoming Primaris. I hope he's still voiced by Mark Strong. Look, the thing with Primaris is every major character who wanted to become a Primaris all lived and became Primaris. They have to. They have to. Dante's a Primaris or whatever. Uh, Marnaeus Calgar is a Primaris. Everybody's fucking Primaris. Uh, look, I don't, I don't mind. It's great. Good, good plot story. And they would be more careful with chapter masters, right? Or significant characters. But wouldn't it be funny if they're like, oh yeah, Lysander of the Imperial Fizz, he tried to become Primaris, Primaris fucking died on slab. Too bad. There goes... There goes chapter master. Oh shit. Uh, Jack rabbit says, so Binger won't prosecute someone who shot Kyle running away, but did prosecute Kyle who only shot imminent threats actively attacking him. Yes. Yes. He's, he's backwards. Uh, Jason Wengler says when given permission to cuss, Andrew turns into Cartman for a while Frick, friggity, frick, frick, frick. What's the big freaking deal anyway? Biatch, not you, honey. I'm not. Uh, sorry, Nick. Gotta go. Uh, Zachary B, thanks again. Catherine Savercool says, it's like Binger doesn't know. Concussions can be lethal and cause long-term issues. Really enjoying the stream? Have a drink or two on me. I can't drink anymore. I'm done. I'm done. Kaniga, please, says I tried that CBX.com thing you plugged and oh my fucking God, that shit is legit, bro. Thanks. Look, I here's here's the here's the unfortunate reality. YouTube says 
Now, I know this is not how YouTube practices uh, in all cases, but YouTube says that promoting Delta 8 products as a sponsorship opportunity is grounds for channel deletion under community guidelines. So to my CBDX people who I love and think are great so far, I would love to accept sponsorship from you, but I can't, I can't do it because YouTube has said, uh, and I'll, I'll send you guys the, the screen cap of this. I'm not just blowing smoke. I, I believe me, I would, I would, uh, I would gladly take the sponsorship. I believe I'm not a big, uh, marijuana user in general. Um, but, uh, I believe that legalized marijuana is the important step forward that our country needs to take on a state by state basis. Uh, I am a libertarian at heart and I think that it is, uh, it is the right thing to do. That being said, um, YouTube says it's a violation of the terms. Now, again, I know there are other channels that they advertise on that they do not subscribe, that they do not enforce on. That's why I will send them in particular, the exact wording that YouTube sent back to me. And it, I, I, I fucking hate that. I can't accept a sponsorship from them. Cause I think, uh, uh, they sound like a small business who has their shit together and I like to support those. Um, but that's, that's the reality. It sucks. 43 J eight, three, two, one says banger must be charged. Outrageous. Roger stone says you have a great way of talking about the law. Nick, much like a successful comedian speaks in pictures. Maybe you will never practice law again, but become the end all be all commentator on the law. Look, uh, if I never practice law again, that's fine. If I do practice law again, that's also fine. Um, I, I'm indifferent to it. The, the main thing right now is I'm, I'm happy to be on a hiatus from practicing actively because, because, um, practicing divides my attention between the show and practice. And I never want to have my show compete against my ethical obligations. I don't, I don't want to do that. So, um, the, the last thing I did got done. And now I'm happy to take a break. That was a two year long case. And I, I really don't want another one of those at this moment. So C Goody says, uh, look into the, what would stoner do? AR 15 is designed originally how Casey stoner intended with lightweight polymers, and no forward assist among other things. It's a beautiful piece of weaponry. Sketch dress car says, while I was in the Marines to get recruits over the fear of recoil, they had us hold the butt sock to our groin and let off a round down range with an M 16. There, there you go. Wolfgang Dale says at two feet, I prefer a pistol easier to angle. Corey says M one, a super match or AR 15, which do you choose? I have no idea. Debbie O says, did Earl gray acknowledge your email about the video? No, no, he's not. Uh, I'll check again, but last I checked, he had not responded. Let me, let me see. And that's okay. I don't care if they respond to me. Um, I just hope they see it. Uh, okay. Yeah. They have not responded to me. And again, I would expect them not to. I just hope they see it. That's all. And, and maybe they talked about it in, uh, in their sidebar. We don't know. We can't hear the sidebar. ZD. Thanks for the donations. Shirley S says bought my first Benelli M2 shotgun. Decided to take it to the range. Not applicable says it's political. Left wants us dead. That's simple. Jackson Kai says they have a variety of marijuana vape pens in Colorado. So vape pen doesn't mean it isn't weed. Someone eating cookies or gummed could be weed. Uh, I need truth says question for Bronca. Do I have a legal defense of self-defense for what I perceive as a reasonable fear of brain damage from listening to Binger talk? Yes. Woodfoot says uh, if we don't buy the class, Andrew's life will be in turmoil and we'll get more hilarious drunk Andrew streams. Giant Brian says, I'll take my M130 carbine before AR. Free Flyer says, I would donate to buy Krauss a Weight Watcher subscription. Sheldon Barfield says, Andrew, any opinions on BMW's adventure bikes, the ones that are meant to go off-road like the G650 or the F650? Not applicable says, don't buy Krauss a book. He'll eat it. Laura B. Dannon says, John Doyle did a video about how to stop mass shooters and a real good breakdown of Kyle's incident when it first happened. Can't foil the Doyle. Don't know who John Doyle is, but check that out, guys. Backcoat says Transformers man, Neil Young. Uh, Bo Bogey34 says Binger sounds more like he should have been the defense attorney in Arbery case 
more so than a biased prosecutor in Kyle Rittenhouse. Hashtag vigilante justice. Hashtag late night Bronca. Joshua Tidwell says class for Joe Biden and Don Lemon. Epic troll. Uh, Salarial X says built the wife a nine millimeter AR when I'm not for when I'm not home. It's like shooting a 22 long rifle. Also, when are you going to talk to Hotep Jesus? I, I, again, it's always about timing and contact. If I can contact them and have the time. Yeah. If I can't contact them, that's a big bar to it. I've never talked to Hotep Jesus. Guy seems cool. Great Mudda says work working up in Broomfield. Call Branca an Uber. No way he blows clear. Love it, boys. Alpha Foxtrot says, I'm glad Nick is as pissed as me. It's hard to listen to. I just want to sit down and nicely ask him legit questions back. Wolfgang Dale says, Kyle actually was an angel. Angels are deadly. I need truth. One says, weird how the straw man defense argument he's attacking is the exact same argument he's been making this whole interview. Yes. How a Jalik, Jalik a kick says, Long as your girlfriend didn't have a boyfriend's cool. Alpha Foxtrot says, I appreciate jury so much more than I ever have before after watching this case in these streams. Uh, Nabor says, like Dante Wright, Binger is suffering from a broken heart from Kyle Rittenhouse. Um, by the way, on the jury thing, you know, juries, again, it's not a perfect system, but it's better than anything else. It's better than anything else else phoenix lord asterman says if you're almost as old as schroeder then tell me how he handled a famous case against a middle eastern man named jesus christ in 33 a.d jackson kai says nick you should fill john roberts a seat when he realizes he was born without a spine and retires chief justice ricada sounds pretty good admit it oh i would then never have me but i would take a chief justice seat or, or any supreme court justice seat any day even though i'd have to do a bunch of writing i would just tell them to get fucked all the time Tux loves you says what's the most states one has practiced law in. I have no idea. I'm just Minnesota. I'm not practiced outside of Minnesota. Don't intend to really. Maybe I'll get admitted to Texas at some point. Or if by some grace of God miracle, I get to move out of Minnesota. Please get me out of this income tax hell hole. Give me somewhere warm. If I ever get that, um, then I'll get barred in whatever state I'm moving to. <coughs> Angry Bell Sprout says, How long until Bronca divorce paper citing Nick? God willing, never. Um, Canel Ryan says, Binger has been accused of being a cinephile. Kyle Service says, She looks like a teenage boy. Amateur Ant says, Fluffer boy couldn't cut it on the outside, but makes it as a pro succutor prosecutor prosecutor printer god says binger dreams of 12 angry men no no yes nico nice nico nico says how's the collab with lewis rossman coming up nikki i i haven't i haven't talked to him i've been i've been so busy i've literally all my collaborative efforts have been either people reaching out to me or they've been me reaching out to the panel of lawyers and just saying hey i'm doing a stream you're welcome on if you have time um, Alpha Foxtrot says, I liked Richards a lot more after his interview. I'd have thought the same Binger, but now I dislike him more. Texas Red says, I would recommend the musical Lease for Binger. You know, the one where everyone has AIDS. Binger should be personally familiar with the premise. Um, S. Cybertide says, Tilda Swindon was Gabriel and Constantine. But more importantly, was she balls, no balls, or smooth like the angels and demons in the movie Dogma? Look, Gabriel was a punk in Constantine. Fuck him. Uh, Michael W says, I would imagine watching a lawyer movie as a lawyer is like being a vet watching a war movie. That's not a thing. Also, thanks for your service. Correct. Correct. It's messy. Eddie Oliver says, I'm waiting for the Perry Mason moment in the Potter trial where it turns out officer lucky actually strangled Dante right to death. Not guilty. Frozen toy says, dude, you're good. I went bald at 19. Eddie Oliver's uh, sorry, man. Sorry to hear that. Or maybe not. Maybe you don't give a shit. Um, look, uh, people are always uh, asking me like about comb overs and weird stuff. If I went bald, I go, I go bald. I, I don't, I really don't care. Um, I spent the most humbling thing in the world was having this tooth knocked out. Uh, I had that tooth knocked out and spent uh, about nine months without a front tooth. Uh, I got, I got over vanity really quickly because I looked like I lived in fucking Arkansas. No one wants to do that. 
Eddie Oliver says, check your Twitter DMs. Look for one from an account with the Gadsden flag. And yeah, I'm from Texas. Okay. New dislike button says, Pride will always have some of the most insane fights MMA has ever seen. They lived off freak show fights. I love UFC, but I wish Pride was still a thing. Do when Mark Coleman uh, was knee dropping that dude on the top of the head for the fucking Pride Championship. That was legendary. That was awesome. Um, <laughs> Jimmy McNutty says, I live in Arkansas, WTF. Look, I'm sorry, buddy. Sorry, man. Uh, Zach, welcome to Paralegal Status. Donald J. Trump says, Krauss has a twin. Her name is Rosie O'Donnell. We're almost done here. Uh, Azriel Bain says, just a reminder to add your intermission song and the Alex Jones songs to your streaming setup. The Alex Jones song is on my streaming setup. Uh, the intermission song is not. I need to get a video made. I'll talk to my editor about it. Marsubio Gamer says, here's one for you. Semper Reloaded. He'd be fantastic to have on here. Wolfgang Dale says, at the other when should one not hire a lawyer? Um, look, when you can't afford it is the only time. I mean, frankly, in theory, if you if you have unlimited money, you would hire an attorney for literally everything. You'd have an attorney just following you around that you could ask questions to, solidify contracts with, get recommendations from. That's not practicable. It's, it's not. So, so you limit it to things that matter. If it matters at all, you should hire an attorney unless you can't afford one. Then you, then you guess you shouldn't. Um, Joel Reese says you need to get Drex from Migtown podcast. He's great. Oh yeah. I'll look into him. Never heard of him. The anime guy says, can you link Englewood book to Nick? Uh, I cannot cause I'm done. But the uh, the mods can certainly link Englewood Book too. Uh, Hallucinosis says YouTube is ashhole. Wolfgang Deo says uh, das YouTube and ash das YouTube shind ashholen. Uh, Albidam says uh, if I'm not mistaken, did you represent Kyle? No, no, I've never talked to him. I would love to, but I've never talked to him. If so, why did you decide to represent him, and how certain were you? that y'all were going to win. I did not represent him at all. I would have been happy to, to be involved in some way, but I was not. Um, I was fairly certain that they would win um, from the start because the facts scenario was heavily in Kyle's favor. The facts on that shooting scream self-defense. There's always a chance that a lawyer or a witness can screw it up or that there's something you don't know. But uh, I thought from the beginning that they would be, that there would be a not guilty verdict and they got it. I was worried that they might not get not guilty, right? That they might get a hung jury, but they got it. So Jack Sparrow, welcome to lawyer status. Wolfgang says there's still 50 more super chats after this. That's a lie. Finally, Mitchell Godson says, if you want to keep expanding your panel, you might drop law talk with Mike and invite heard him talk about watching your coverage the other day. Who the hell is law talk with Mike? I would love to. There isn't a, there's another attorney that we're trying to get on as well. Um, I'll send him an invite to tomorrow's show. He, he had one for today's show, but it was about halfway through. So I'll send him on today. It might be law talk with Mike. I, I don't know. Um, I don't remember. Let me check. Let me check the name. Who do we have here? Uh, da, 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 da. no, that's not law talk with Mike. That's, uh, that's a different person. I won't, I won't call them out because, um, I don't want to. You know, I don't want to like call someone out if they're not on the show, but I will. Um, we've got another lawyer potentially on the panel. We had the two Amazons today. That was a great addition. By the way, guys, I didn't do this during the stream, but if you liked it, like the stream. Um, thank you. I just drank in absence of your likes. I know you don't like the show, but if you have not liked the stream and you did enjoy it, please uh, do that. It helps with engagement. I don't like shilling it all the time because I'm a bad chiller, but um I, I appreciate everything that you guys do to help the show get spread and get more people in to watch it. Um, the funny, the funniest thing for me is, you know, I told my YouTube person, they were like, Oh, uh, you know, you do really well on super chats and all this stuff. And I said, if you, if you assholes would just get out of my, yes, I said, if you assholes, if you assholes would just get out of my way, I will do, I will do so much more. I will reach people. If you just, if you just get out of my way, if you just stop shadow banning me, 
if you fuckers would just give me the same treatment that you would give like a legal eagle, just give me the basic package of YouTube and I will bring people in where they will be entertained. They will watch the shows and, and we'll do super chats and ads and all of that stuff. And it'll be great. Just let me get to people. That's all I've ever asked from YouTube. That's all I've ever asked. And they don't always want to do it. But anyway, it's time for me to go to bed because it's fucking late. Almost three. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Kim Potter, 8.45 to 9 a.m. Central Time. Tweet's going to go out with a link to it um, about five minutes after the show ends because I got to build it. But I'll see you guys then. Have a good night. Peace. Peace. Oh, he drinks a fair bit, but you realize that It just helps get his noggin jogging along With his glass by his side and his kids asleep tight We'll hear some lost planning tonight With his microphone muted, we'll laugh at this boom Until he explains it's all part of the plan Watch his face become redder as he becomes better Raging at idiots from Twitter and Erlang the white shores of Maine to the hills of Glen Livet. There's no one who plays the part better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the one to have passed. Make the law what we have now. Oh, his lady is fair and she handles herself with the grace of one who has borne many children. As the wife of a lawman, she makes sure that he has the time and the place to provide for them there. So pour out an art bag of Balmor of the Brock. The spirits flow as the ones who get on the floor. So pour out a glass for the tea post on Twitter as we hear lost blaming tonight. From the white shores of Nam to the hills of Glen Levitt, there's no one who explains the throng better than me. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the law what we have now. Oh, the guests are all plentiful from Dutchie to Drexel. They bring their perspective and spice to the mix. But the reason we're here and the one that we cheer is the one who is showcasing us his career. Draws a man to the hills of Glen Levitt. There's no one who explains the